Are you feeling weighed down by the complexities of modern life? Do the relentless demands of technology, work and relationships leave you feeling stressed and disconnected? If these questions echo your current state, take a deep breath and know that you're not alone. In an age where the pace of life seems to only accelerate, finding solid ground can feel like an insurmountable task. Yet, here you stand at the threshold of a transformative journey. You've discovered a guide that doesn't just skim the surface, but dives deep into the heart of what it means to navigate the challenges of the modern world with grace, strength, and serenity. This isn't about escaping reality or dismissing the difficulties you face. It's about confronting them with a renewed perspective and tools that have been refined through centuries of wisdom. Stoicism, an ancient philosophy that has regained popularity for its practicality and depth, offers a powerful framework for personal growth and resilience. This guide will introduce you to Stoic principles that can help you stay centered and calm in the chaos, transform obstacles into opportunities, and cultivate a life of meaning and contentment. Through simple, accessible explanations and actionable advice, You'll learn how to apply Stoic wisdom to your everyday life, empowering you to overcome modern challenges with a balanced and thoughtful approach. Whether you're dealing with workplace stress, personal relationships, or the constant bombardment of information and expectations, Stoicism provides a pathway to navigate these waters with poise and purpose. Welcome to a journey that promises not just to change how you face the challenges of today, but also how you view yourself and your place in the world. Let's begin this exploration together, armed with the insights and practices of Stoicism, and move towards a life of greater freedom, clarity and peace. Have you ever felt like you had a heavy cloud over your head that wouldn't lift? It could be loneliness, worry or sadness. Anyone can feel these strong feelings even the greatest ones. The ancient Stoics were not immune to feelings like loneliness or sadness, despite their reputation for extraordinary resilience and courage. What made them different? It wasn't that they didn't have these thoughts. It was how they dealt with them in real life, which we will talk about next. We'll look at 12 Stoic methods that can help you turn these difficult feelings into chances to grow and think about yourself. You can think of these treatments as tools in your Stoic kit. Each one has its own purpose to help you heal your spirit, get through hard times, and feel better. Remember that, like the Stoics, you have the inner strength to face your feelings head-on and come out better. This is true whether you're feeling alone, stressed, or just stuck. Stick around if you're ready to start a new story where those feelings are challenges you know how to handle, We'll look at these tried and true ways to not only get by, but also to grow. 1. Move your body. Moving your body isn't just a way to get fit. It's also a key way to fight sadness and loneliness. You can think of it as a chat with your inner self, where each step strengthens your resilience. You're not running away from your problems when you walk, run or stretch. Instead, you're consciously going toward a better, more peaceful state of mind. With each step and breath you take, you add to your unique story of beating obstacles. This is what the process is all about. Real talk. When you're sad or lonely, you might want to curl up and shut the world out. You may not know this secret, but your body is really strong and can fight back against these ghosts. When you move, you start a spark inside you that shines a light in the darkest parts of your thoughts. You don't have to climb mountains or run races to be healthy. Just move with purpose. Whether you dance by yourself in your living room or go for a fast walk in the park, every move you make is a blow against the chains of hopelessness. It's a message that you are in charge and can make your own way to happiness and health. 2. Be a better friend to yourself. Being your own best friend may sound like an old-fashioned idea with a modern twist, but it's a powerful way to fight loneliness and sadness. 
Imagine for a moment that you are facing a steep walk up life's mountain with many problems that seem impossible to solve. Would you scold a friend for going down this road or would you lend them a hand, say something positive and believe in their ability to get through it? Think of Clenthes, an old stoic philosopher who once heard a soul talking to itself as if it were a worthless stranger. Remember, you're not talking to a bad person, Clenthes said, cutting through the loop of being alone and judging oneself with the sharpness of kindness. This isn't just a story from the past. It's a reflection of our own struggles, where being alone makes us develop a harsh inner judge, which keeps us even further from the joy of human interaction. Being friends with yourself isn't about false comforts or sweet nothings. It's about being honest about how much you're worth. When you're about to feel like you're not good enough, remember what was said on the streets of Athens. Negative self-talk keeps us from finding love and connection. It has to do with changing the story in your mind from enemy to friend. You're not a bad person. You're a person, which means you're complicated and can grow. Coming to this understanding is the key to not only loving yourself, but also letting other people see your light. It's a stoic cure that has been around for a long time and is still very wise. It tells you to be the friend to yourself that you want in other people. 3. Be happier. Going after your dreams and making them come true can feel like a never-ending search for happiness, with times of success interspersed with a constant need for more. This never-ending search often keeps us from seeing how beautiful the present moment is, which creates a paradox where success makes us unhappy. This is a story that repeats itself over and over again in the stories of people who have been famous but now feel empty inside. For example, consider the story of an actor who, despite being praised for his work on a popular TV show, was stuck in a web of worried dissatisfaction and longed for more fame in the movie business. His experiences show a deep truth. We are most often happy when we have good relationships with ourselves, not when we get praise or awards. Being happy means living in the present and being thankful for where we are without constantly comparing ourselves to others or wanting what they have. Understanding that the search for more can often take us away from the happiness we seek is at the heart of this poem. This method doesn't just help with sadness or loneliness, it changes the way we see things by teaching us to value the present and find joy in the simplicity of being rather than the complexity of doing. 4. Think about standing on a piece of land you call your own and feeling how big it is under your feet. Then, imagine seeing how big it really is from the window of a spaceship or plane. Suddenly, something that seemed limitless turns out to be just a dot in the middle of an endless fabric. People have known this for a long time, even Marcus Aurelius, who ruled a kingdom that covered the known world, understood how important it was to zoom out. He thought of the fights on the edges of his power as small fights between ants over a crumb. The way this lens shows things makes us remember that life cycles, the rise and fall of generations, and the never-ending dance of human nature are not new to our time. Our own problems, the big events we think happened, are just echoes in a story that will never end. By looking at things from a higher angle, we learn that our biggest fears are usually not as big as we think they are, and that the little things that don't seem important connect us to a universal human experience. It's a call to see things in a bigger picture and find comfort, respect and clarity in the knowledge that we are a part of something much bigger, a story that has been told for thousands of years. This new way of looking at things doesn't make our experiences less important. Instead, it ties us to the vastness of life itself. It urges us to find meaning in both the big and the small things, and it shows us the strength and resilience that have always been at the heart of the human spirit. Five. Learn to suffer with others. 
There is a deep power and magic in working together to overcome problems, whether it's climbing a mountain, rowing against the mist in the morning, or sitting in silence with a group of people whose minds are racing at the same time. These kinds of activities, which are very different from the solo challenges of running or swimming, bring people together in ways that go beyond friendship. They tell us that we are not fighting our fights by ourselves, but with other fighters who share our spirit. Think about how strong it is to look into the eyes of someone else who is just as driven and vulnerable as you are and is pushing through the pain barrier. This is where real community starts, in the heat of a group task, not in the comfort of an easy win. Let this be a call to join those who want to do more than just survive. Let us work together to win, because it is through shared suffering that we find our true power. This way, we never have to face the darkness by ourselves. 6. Ask for help. Being brave doesn't just mean going into war by yourself. It also means knowing when to ask for help. Even the strongest fighters knew how important it was to have a shield wall next to them when they were facing the storm. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic not only in philosophy, but also in the fights he led, once showed those who were going in the dark the way. He told her, don't be ashamed to need help. If you're feeling like the weight of the world is on your shoulders, this ancient saying is still true. Like a soldier storming a wall, you have a mission to accomplish. And if you've been wounded and need a comrade to pull you up, so what? People are being told not to fight alone, but to find their company or group of people who are ready to fight with them. That's not what makes you strong, having the courage to reach out and help someone. In support groups, people who are trying to get better can find power not in a leadership telling them what to do, but in the unity of struggling together and helping each other. It shows how strong group resilience can be and is a place where modern Stoics are made, not born. You're not less important because you're asking for help. Even kings have been on this path of knowledge. Every voice that begs for help and every hand that is raised in unity is a step out of the darkness and into the light. 7. Focus on your route. In today's busy world, making your way requires more than just knowing where you want to go. You also need to be disciplined enough to stay on track and not get lost in the noise. Seneca taught us about eudaimonia, which means being aware of our own trip without being sidetracked by the many other roads that cross it. We can remember from this old saying that the real challenge is not planning our path, but staying on track when the winds and mistakes of others tempt us to stray. It tests our self-confidence and control by making us stick to our plans and goals without getting sidetracked by the many things that come up in our daily lives. If we choose this road, we have to recognize that everyone's trip is different, including our own. When we stop comparing our accomplishments to those of others, we find a deep sense of meaning and happiness. Realizing this isn't easy, you have to keep working at it to get past your ego and the constant need for approval. But the benefit is not having to compare ourselves to others, which lets us follow our goals without fear or question. Focusing on our path not only helps us see life more clearly, but it also helps us build resilience that protects us from the loneliness and sadness that come from feeling like we're not on the same page as everyone else. 8. Keep in mind that things change over time. Life has a funny way of leveling the playing field so that our actions don't have as much of an effect on others. Marcus Aurelius noticed that even Julius Caesar and the most simple Roman citizen go to the same place in the ground. This is a strong warning that our hopes for fame, importance or immortality are but brief sounds in the background of eternity. Sic transit gloria mundi, history says, telling us that glory is only here for a short time. Fame, fame, and the false sense of importance can all lull us to sleep with promises of eternal life, but they can also leave us lost in the shadows of forgetfulness. This knowledge doesn't make us hopeless. Instead, 
It tells us to ground our efforts, not in the sands of praise, but in the dirt of virtue, to grow kindness, to focus on the good we can do right now, and to guide our own ship through life's rough seas. These are the things that help us find our way through the fog of change, because in the end, it's not the crowd's cheers that make the largest holes in the river of time, it's the goodness of our deeds and the honesty of our character. 9. Adversity is not a sign to give up. Rather, it's the universe's way of challenging you to a battle of wills with fate. Accept that you will face problems. The message of Seneca, which has been passed down through the ages, is that we find our true selves on the road less traveled and filled with adversity. It's nice to sail along quiet waters, but it's the storms that bring out the captain in all of us. You might want to wallow in sadness when things in life don't go the way you want them to, but it's these trials, the friction and pushback we face, that make us better people. When things are really tough, when plans fall apart, and when our dreams seem far away, that's when we're given a great chance. Wishing for an easy life isn't the point. The point is to embrace the chaos, fight it, and come out stronger and smarter. Accept this. Every trial should serve as a chance to practice virtue, a lesson in resilience, and a step toward greatness. Keep in mind that the sweet taste of success is never as satisfying without the bitter taste of fights won and problems solved. Life doesn't always go the way you want it to, but you should still dance because that's when you become stronger and happy. 10. Feeling alone or down can be like carrying a rock on your shoulders, but remember that even the smartest people in the past had to deal with things that were so big they seemed impossible to handle. With his pen as his sword, Seneca wrote four moving pieces that were meant to not only comfort the soul, but also welcome it in its darkest hours. It wasn't just words. They were lifelines thrown into the rough waters of human feeling. He taught us something very important that is still true today. Don't lock up your feelings and throw away the key. It's not about putting on a mask of disinterest. It's about understanding the storm of feelings and riding it out, not as a prisoner, but as a boss. To be truly strong, you need to know that it's okay to feel sad and that human relationships are complicated. Understanding why you're sad is the first step. Mind and heart are dancing with each other and each one takes the lead when the time is right. When the weight of loneliness or sadness feels too much to bear, remember that you're not being told to shut down your heart. Instead, you're being told to listen to it, understand it, and know that sometimes the way through isn't through pushing it down, but through acceptance and understanding. 11. Look for silence. In a world that never stops talking, reading and moving, finding stillness might seem like an old secret, but it's good for you, especially when you're feeling lonely or sad. Marcus Aurelius says to think of yourself as a rock in the middle of the ocean's waves of worry, doubt and loneliness. You won't give in to them. You don't have to ignore the chaos. You just have to find your center in the middle of it. Take a deep breath, calm your mind, and firmly put your feet on the ground. This stillness isn't just a break. It's where the magic happens, where ideas bloom, relationships grow, and happiness rises to the surface. You will have the strength to face the world, not as it spins around you, but as you choose to interact with it when you're calm. When you accept silence, you don't just get through the storm. You learn how to dance with the waves, which can turn times of loneliness and sadness into times of deep peace and purpose. 12. In the rush of life, it's easy to get lost in a sea of what-ifs and if-onlys. But accepting things as they are is a strong way to fight the loneliness and sadness that often come with our never-ending search for different results. This isn't about giving up or giving in to hopelessness. It's about seeing the secret harmony in the chaos, the unexpected lessons in the failure, 
and the strength that comes from accepting that life is unpredictable. We can feel a deep sense of peace and clarity when we accept the present moment as it is, not as we wish it were. This point of view isn't about being passive. It's a call to action, to deal with life as it comes, to find our meaning and happiness in the way things are happening around us. If you think of your life as a river, you can swim against the current, getting tired as you try to get back to the past or to the future too quickly, or you can float, trusting the trip and enjoying the sights along the way. This is what Amor Fati, or love of fate, is all about. It teaches us to appreciate every turn and twist in life because each one shapes us into the people we are meant to be. A voice from the past, Marcus Aurelius, speaks to us through time and space, telling us to understand that whatever we add to the fire of our lives, happiness, sadness, victory or defeat, fuels our growth and shows us the way to greatness. When we see our events not as problems but as chances to learn and grow, we build resilience and a deep, lasting happiness. Don't just think about the idea, put it into practice too and watch yourself change. The best way to get back at someone who hurt you is to be different from them. Did you know that there's a secret battlefield in everyday interaction? Manipulation versus authenticity is the hidden battle and our thoughts and hearts are the winners. We see it in movies, read about it in books, and even have our phones with us at work, at home, and in our mouths. Now, picture yourself handling this battlefield with the knowledge of the old Stoics, who knew how to keep your mind safe and how valuable it is. They taught us to hold on to our inner citadel, our core of reason and virtue, in order to not only live, but also grow in the middle of life's chaos. How can we use Stoic knowledge to spot these tricks and protect ourselves in a world where influence can come from anywhere and hide behind many masks? Let's look into this together, so stay with me. We will learn about the modern tricks that try to test our toughness and how to use old ideas to protect our minds and live with meaning. Building a life of authenticity, resilience and real freedom is what this is all about, not just dodging problems. You're in the right place if you've ever felt played, pushed or just plain confused by what other people did. Let's go on this trip of strength together, using the Stoics' ancient knowledge to help us. This will change how we deal with the world around us. Also, before we start this trip together, let's say you and your friend are good friends. Then a third person shows up and all of a sudden your friend starts telling other people private things you said, or even worse, they start changing your words to make a story that makes you two enemies. As an adult, the emotional fallout can be much worse, so it's like being in a playground scenario again, but with bigger stakes. You start to doubt your decisions, your friends, and even your view of reality. This is like playing a game where the rules change all the time and you're always behind. What's the real deal? Most of the time, you don't even know what's going on until you're full of questions and feel completely alone in a crowd. Stoics like Marcus Aurelius and Seneca showed us how important it is to be at peace with ourselves and understand how we respond to things that happen around us. A calm response to triangulation would be to look at the situation without getting involved, see the manipulation for what it is and refuse to let it get in the way of your inner peace. Realizing that you can change how you react even if you can't change what other people do, is important. Stoic knowledge also tells us how important it is to talk to each other directly and try to make things clear. If you think someone is trying to trick you, be honest and open with them. Bringing things that are hidden into the light can often get rid of the shadows of trickery. Remember that your best defenses against triangulation are your sense of self your ability to question the story that is being told about you and your resolve to keep relationships that are honest and open. If your boat has a leak, 
you need to know how to fix it quickly and keep going forward with the help of the stars of knowledge and honesty. Real life is full of times when you're stuck between what to do and what not to do. You feel stuck in a loop of always making the wrong choice because every choice you make seems to lead to some kind of criticism or failure. It would be great if you were urged to share your ideas and say what's on your mind so that you could be your real self. That's why when you finally get the courage to open up, you're scolded or thrown out for it. It's not clear, right? You're told to jump into the pool, but as soon as you do, you're told off for getting wet. People who want to control you like this method because it throws you off track. You start to doubt yourself, your choices, and even what you think. You can't be sure of what's going on because the rules seem to change whenever someone wants. The deco Jackie of power is another important idea that Stoicism teaches us about. We need to know what we can and cannot control. For example, you can control your actions, your reactions, and your honesty. The things other people do, even when they try to catch you in a double bind, are not. You are urged to speak out, but if you do, you will be attacked. Remember that your worth and the value of your gifts are not based on how other people react, but on your own commitment to speaking and acting with ethics. To be calm, you would see the double bind for what it is, a task from the outside world that doesn't say anything about your worth or skills. It requires courage to react in a cool and collected manner rather than with anger or self-doubt. Could you explain what is expected? Could you talk about the mixed feedback? Turning inward and focused on keeping your own moral standards might be the best way to move forward if the situation still can't be fixed. This can be very sneaky because it can not only make you confused, but also make you question your actions and thoughts. If someone feels bad about lying, they might say that you're the one who is lying, or if they're jealous, they might say that you can't be trusted. Making the problems about someone else, like you, is a way for them to avoid facing their own flaws, which makes them feel bad. Stoicism gives us the courage to consider whether the charges made against us are true. Are they really a measure of who we are or what we do, or are they someone else's problems? By keeping a clear sense of who we are and staying rooted in our own truth, we can block these false images from breaking through to our peace of mind. Marcus Aurelius tells us to treat other people's flaws with kindness and understanding and to see projection for what it is, a sign of someone else's inner turmoil. This helps us react with kindness and understanding instead of anger or defense. This doesn't mean we believe the idea or don't say anything about it. Instead, we can strongly but gently deny the false charges and, if possible, muster the courage to ask the presenter to consider their own actions. To deal with projection in a calm way, we must also know the limits of our responsibility. We are only accountable for our actions, our honesty, and our answers. We are not accountable for carrying the emotional baggage that other people try to dump on us. This difference is very important for keeping our mental health when we are projected upon. Setting and sticking to clear personal limits can also help you deal with projection. Stoicism shows us how important it is to know what is mentally, psychologically, and morally ours and what is not. When someone puts their flaws on us, it's a clear sign that we need to set stronger limits, so to speak, to keep other people's trash out of our yard. This trick for getting what you want can happen anywhere. When things are on sale, the limited time offer is what makes you want to buy them right away. In relationships, it could be a partner pushing you to make a pledge faster than you'd like. And at work, it could show up as ridiculous schedules that force you to make choices without enough knowledge or thought. The deco Jackie of control is one of the most important ideas in Stoicism. It means figuring out what we can control and what we can't. When we're pressed for time, it's important to remember that we can't change the things that other people ask of us, but we can change how we respond to them. 
As Stoicism suggests, we can choose to take a deep breath, step back, and look at the situation with clarity and reason. Seneca says that time is the most valuable thing we have. As Stoicism teaches us, though, it's not how fast we make choices that matters most. What matters is how well those decisions fit with our values and make sense. This means that when someone tries to rush us, quoting Seneca can be a strong way to stop them. It's about realizing that the sense of pressure isn't always real and that real chances, real friends and real deals will give us the time and space to make the best choices for us. Marcus Aurelius challenges us to live in the here and now and to do so with honesty and purpose. This silent exercise can really help you when you're pressed for time. We can stay calm and make choices that are in our best interests by staying in the present and not getting caught up in the rush of a ticking clock. Taking a calm view on time pressure also means practicing courage. The courage to refuse to do something, the courage to ask for more time, and the courage to stick to our choices, even if they go against what other people say is important right now. It's about being strong enough to fight the wave of urgency and pick the road that fits with our personal values and good sense. This strategy is especially shocking because it goes against our basic need for relationships to be stable and predictable. It makes us feel very uncomfortable when someone's behavior toward us changes all the time. We're hardwired to want acceptance and to feel like we belong. So when these things are given to us and then taken away suddenly, we crave more, try to figure out what happened and end up walking on eggshells. The Stoics teach us that our happiness and peace of mind shouldn't rest on things outside of us, like how other people act. Seneca says that we should base our happiness on our own virtue and reason instead of on what other people think of us. Epictetus tells us that we can choose how to react to things that happen around us. We can stay focused and tell ourselves that the only thing we really have control over is our own thoughts and actions when things don't make sense. This doesn't mean we don't care about how other people treat us. It just means we don't let their mood swings affect our own. Stoicism in the face of uncertainty means building a sense of self-worth that doesn't depend on approval from other people. Realizing that we don't need stability and clarity in our relationships to be happy or feel good about ourselves is part of this process. In spite of the chaos around us, Marcus Aurelius urges us to find peace within ourselves. This inner peace serves as a guide, helping us find our way through the fog of inconsistent behavior. Stoicism also teaches us how important it is to be clear when we talk to each other and set limits. When other people are inconsistent, it may be a sign that we need to be more clear about what we want and need. It asks us to put the Stoic ideals of justice and courage into practice. Justice means dealing with the problem head-on with kindness and respect for both yourself and the other person. You could imagine that someone locked up your emotions, the real, raw emotions that make you who you are. People tell you that you have to pay a price to get them back and feel better again. It could mean giving up something you value or doing something you don't feel safe with. It feels like your emotions are being held hostage and the only way to free them is to agree to do whatever the blackmailer wants. It's not just manipulation. It's manipulation that goes deep, using your ability to feel against you, which is at the heart of what it means to be human. Emotional blackmail can come in many forms, such as by making someone feel guilty, scary, obligated, or shamed. This method uses our fears, our loves, and our need to be seen as good, loving people. One thing is for sure though, Real love and respect don't come with strings. They don't require you to meet a list of conditions or put someone else's wants ahead of your own. Stoicism tells us that we can't change what other people do or expect, but we can change how we respond to them. We don't have to play the game. 
We learn from Marcus Aurelius how important it is to live in harmony with nature, which means being true to our own nature or character. Emotional blackmail means that someone wants us to do something that goes against who we are, something that goes against our morals and ethics, so they can get what they want. Stoics say that we should stick to our values, act with virtue, and keep our inner peace and respect no matter what other people say or do. Stoicism also teaches us how important it is to care about other people and ourselves. When we're being emotionally blackmailed, it's important to be kind to ourselves and remember that it's okay to feel upset or confused, but we don't have to act on those feelings. It's also important to try to see things from the other person's point of view, since their actions are probably caused by their own pain or needs not being met. But being able to understand does not mean agreeing. We can show concern without giving up our freedom. This isn't just an argument, it's an attempt to get you to think about how you see the world. That's tricking someone. This kind of trickery is so sneaky and delicate that it can make you doubt your memory, your mind, and even your truth. Gaslighting can happen in many ways, such as denying something you know happened, saying something that goes against how you feel, or calling your worries illogical or overly sensitive. The goal is always the same to make you less sure of your own experiences and thoughts so that you rely more on the manipulator's version of reality. Marcus Aurelius tells us to stay strong even when things are going wrong around us. He teaches us to believe what we think and feel and to go back to our inner castle where we can be calm and logical and where no one else's words can reach us. Stoicism also teaches us to constantly think on ourselves to look at our beliefs and views, not with doubt, but with clarity and honesty. This practice can be very helpful when we are being gaslighted because it helps us tell the difference between real self-examination and doubt that comes from outside sources. When our reality is being unfairly questioned, we can tell because we know ourselves and our minds very well. The tough way to deal with gaslighting is not to become immune to it, but to see it for what it is, an outside attempt to control and upset us, and to fight back with all our inner strength, our dedication to telling the truth, and our faith in our own views. It's about keeping our emotions and minds in check, even when someone tries to tell us the sky isn't blue. False social acceptance plays on our deep-seated need to fit in, and be a part of the group. It tells us, even when our gut tells us otherwise, that we need to follow the crowd to fit in. There is a catch, though. Just because someone says everyone does, it doesn't mean it's true. This is a standard example of fake social support, a way to control our behavior or thoughts by playing on our need to fit in with others. Being true to ourselves and acting in line with nature were some of the things Marcus Aurelius told us. It is important to remember that his lessons tell us to act based on our inner ideals, not on short-lived society fads. We are asked to think about whether this behavior is good. Does it work for the good of everyone? Is it in line with who I really am? Stoicism also teaches us about the power of ataraxia, which is the peace of mind you get from living in a way that makes sense. When it comes to fake social approval, this idea becomes even more important. We keep our inner peace by sticking to our well-thought-out decisions and not letting the actions of the masses affect us. This doesn't mean cutting ourselves off from society or ignoring social norms completely. Instead, it means thinking about the worth and effects of these norms on our lives and choosing which ones to follow. Also, the Stoic practice of premeditation, which means picturing problems that might come up and getting ready to deal with them, can be very helpful here. By thinking ahead to times when fake social approval could be used against us, we can strengthen our minds by practicing sticking to Stoic principles and our promise to always act with integrity, no matter what other people say. Imagine getting ready to do a project and being excited about it, but as you start to put it together, 
you find that half of the pieces are missing. You can't finish the picture or see the whole thing, no matter how hard you try. Like having important information kept from you, this anger feels like that. It's done on purpose to change how you see things and keep you from seeing the whole truth, which changes your choices and views based on incomplete information. There are many situations where people might hide information. In personal relationships, someone might not say how they feel or what they plan to do. At work, full details of a project or decision might be kept secret. And in larger social or political debates, the public may not be told all the facts. This strategy takes advantage of the fact that we all want to understand and make sense of the world around us. When puzzle pieces are purposely hidden from us, it can cause us to become confused, mistakes happen, and we act in the wrong way. The Stoic philosopher Seneca said that people should not judge or make decisions too quickly or without fully knowing them. He would tell us to wait, ask questions, and get as much information as we could before we decided what to do or formed an opinion. This doesn't mean we can't make a choice. It just means we know we don't fully understand everything and move forward with a controlled and well thought out plan. Marcus Aurelius also tells us of how important it is to be wise inside and seek the truth for its own sake. We are told to use our own inner resources, to use our reason and sense to question what we don't know and look for more sources of information when we are told that information is being kept from us. The goal of looking at the bigger picture is not just to make better choices. It's also to become more in line with the stoic ideal of living in harmony with nature and truth. Fear attachment is a way to control your behavior by linking a scary result to any choice other than doing what you're told. It works very well to control people because it plays on one of our most basic urges, fear. Someone might say to you in a personal relationship, if you leave, you'll never find someone like me again, or in a professional setting, do this or your career here is over. This kind of fear attachment makes you make decisions based on fear instead of logic. The Stoics teach us that fear, like all other emotions, is not a true mirror of reality, but rather a thought that can be looked at, understood, and eventually managed. Marcus Aurelius tells us that our logical mind has the power to keep us calm even when things around us are upsetting, like when someone tries to control us through fear. He says that we should go back to our inner fortress, our place of reason and virtue, where we can make choices without being swayed by outside noise and threats that aren't true. Seneca also says that when we face our fears head on, we often discover that they are not as impossible as we thought. When we face the assumed results of not following through, they often lose some of their power over us. This lets us make choices based on our real values and what's best for us, instead of out of fear. You becoming the victim of their actions or feelings is a common trick used by manipulators to avoid taking responsibility for their actions or feelings. This is a way for them to dodge responsibility and keep up their own sense of self-worth at your cost. People may say things like, you made me do that in a personal relationship, or if you had done your job right, this wouldn't have happened at work. This can make you feel guilty or ashamed, even if you didn't do anything wrong. The Stoics tell us that we should always be responsible for our own thoughts and deeds, no matter what is going on around us. Stupid philosopher Epictetus once said, it's not what happens to you that matters, but how you react to it. This is especially true when people are pointing the finger at others. We can't change what other people do or say, but we can change how we react to them. Stoicism tells us to stay calm and honest when someone accuses us of something that isn't true about our character or deeds. This takes courage. Marcus Aurelius also tells us how important it is to understand and care about others, even when people are moving blame. He says that when people try to put the blame on us, it's usually because they are having problems with guilt or not being good enough. 
we can help calm things down and keep our own peace of mind by reacting with patience and kindness instead of anger or defensiveness. Finally, Stoicism teaches us how important it is to set limits and look out for our own mental health. When someone keeps trying to shift the blame, we may need to politely but firmly explain our point of view and make it clear what kind of behavior we will not tolerate. Finally, it can be hard to deal with the manipulation techniques we've looked at so far, such as deception, the double bind, projection, time pressure, inconsistency, emotional blackmail, gaslighting, fake social approval, information suppression, fear attachment, and moving blame. They put our resilience, honesty, and ability to stay focused in the face of pressure from outside the classroom to the test. But by following the stoic principles of recognizing what we can control, protecting our inner fortress of reason and virtue, and acting with courage, compassion, and honesty, we can give ourselves the strength to stand up to manipulation and live our lives in a way that is true to our values and principles. Remember that the best way to get back at people who manipulate us is not to use the same tricks ourselves, but to rise above them, be true to ourselves, and build a life with meaning, honesty, and real connection. Marcus Aurelius said, the best way to get back at someone who hurt you is to be unlike them. Are you stressed out because your mind is always thinking of new things? You are not the only one going through this. Today's world is very busy, and being able to think clearly and quickly may seem like a rare talent. Still, there is hope. Ancient Stoic philosophers and masters of the mind gave us a treasure map for getting clear in our minds. Now, let's look at 11 important Stoic lessons that can change the way you think and make your life more satisfying. It's not just a philosophy, it's also a set of useful tools you can use to calm and clear your mind. The first lesson is to be open to doubt and question what you think you know. The Stoics had a deep understanding of what it means to be human. These people thought that real knowledge comes from realizing how much we don't know. Even though it might not make sense, Seneca said that waiting can keep us from acting. Holding on to ideas without questioning them creates mental blocks that make it hard to see clearly and act in the best way. So, what can we do to get rid of these limits we put on ourselves and develop the clear thinking that the Stoics pushed for? The answer is to be open to doubt and question what we think we know. How to do it? To begin, we need to break down our first ideas. Our brains naturally make snap decisions based on little knowledge and biases that are deeply embedded. These first thoughts may seem reasonable, but they may be wrong. We can question them by asking, what evidence backs up this thought? Are there other points of view I should still think about? Could my views be changing how I understand things? We can get rid of the cognitive flaws that cloud our judgment and lead us astray by questioning our first thoughts. Second, we should look for opinions that disagree with us. People who share our views tend to stick close to us, making echo chambers that strengthen our assumptions. Seeking out different points of view, opposite points of view, tough conversations and new experiences is a good way to broaden our knowledge of the world and reveal any thinking gaps we may have. Third, we need to believe in the power of what-if questions. We shouldn't just take things at face value. Instead, we should look at other possible outcomes, think about unexpected effects, and question the status quo. We can predict problems and make better decisions when our minds are flexible like this. In the fourth place, we can use devil's pleading. We can find problems with our ideas and views and make cases against them. This self-evaluation, which comes from the stoic practice of negative vision, helps our ideas and shows us where they are wrong. Finally, we should be happy about being intellectually humble. Real understanding means being aware of what we don't know 
and willing to change our minds when new information or points of view come along. Intellectual humility is the key to clear thought and learning for the rest of your life. It's important to remember that asking ideas doesn't mean we doubt ourselves. It means we give ourselves the tools to think critically and make good choices. By following these stoic principles, we can open the door to a clearer, better mind that is ready to handle the complicated world with grace and knowledge. Let's start this educational trip, ask big questions, and find out what our thinking is really capable of. Lesson 2. Write down your goals and beliefs. You could be going across a big ocean with no tools to help you. If the winds and currents changed, you wouldn't be able to plan your route or know where you were going. But if you had a reliable map to guide you, it would be very important to have clear beliefs and goals. They will help you stay on track even when things get tough. They help you find your way through life's unpredictable currents by giving you direction and a clear picture of where you want to go. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor, began by saying that the Stoics were known for putting a lot of importance on life with a reason. He knew that self-reflection and having a clear sense of purpose were important for getting through life's problems. You have to go on a journey of self-discovery and follow some rules before you can make your own way. First, you need to take a close look at your beliefs and figure out what's most important to you. What this is could be honesty, kindness, creativity, or something else. If you want to know what to do when things get tough, think about your past, present, and future experiences, emotions, and goals. This will help you come up with a way to make decisions that is in line with your core values. Once you know what your values are, you can turn them into clear goals and ambitions. Plan both short-term and long-term goals that will help you get where you want to go. Think about the big changes you want to see in the world, the things you want to learn and do, and the experiences you want to have. You can do these things by setting clear goals that will guide and inspire you. It is very important that your goals and your core values are in line with each other, not random thoughts or other forces. Think about whether your goals are in line with what you believe in your heart. Once you know that achieving your goals will make you feel more fulfilled and give your life meaning, and you're ready to go through hard times and give up things to get there, it's important to be open to change because life is a journey that never ends. Be ready to change your goals as you learn more and gain more experience. Troubles that come up out of the blue and shifting beliefs could mean that you need to change path. Changes. Be open to flexibility and be ready to adapt, but stay true to your core values. The Stoics can be a motivation when your values and goals are in line with each other. Read the works of Marcus Aurelius, Epicurus and Seneca to learn how to think about yourself, live a purpose-driven life and get through tough times. When you constantly think about yourself, figuring out your beliefs and goals without getting upset is a process that you go through all the time. You can set sail with confidence because you know that your views and goals will lead you to a life with meaning and purpose. You can find your way to a useful and real trip if you learn to deal with change and follow the Stoics' advice. Third lesson, watch out for thinking errors. Our brains can also lead us wrong because they aren't always good at finding our way. Just like the Stoics carefully thought through their decisions, we need to be aware of these biases and do what we can to lessen their effect. Cognitive biases are ways of thinking that aren't logical and can cause us to make mistakes and misjudge things. Here are some common assumptions and ways to fight them. Imagine walking through a thick forest without a guide that works. Every turn is a risk that takes you deeper into the unknown. Everyone is affected by this cognitive bias, which is called confirmation bias, and it can be hard to keep an open mind. It makes it hard to see the big picture and hides the truth because it starts a loop that keeps going. 
Have you ever noticed that we tend to only look at information that backs up what we already believe and ignore anything that goes against it? How to get past it? Actively look for different points of view and question what you think you know. Read pieces written from different points of view, have polite conversations and think about other ideas. Availability bias. This is when we overestimate how likely something is to happen based on examples that are easy to find. For instance, you might become afraid of flying after seeing an accident on the news, even if flying is generally safe. How to get past it. When making choices, don't just focus on memorable stories. Instead, make decisions based on data and facts, get complete information and think about the bigger picture. Anchoring bias. This is when we give too much weight to the first piece of information we see and use it to judge other information later on. One example is an early deal that might make a product look better value than it really is. How to get around it? Before making a choice, pay attention to starts and first suggestions. Get as much information as you can and be fair as you weigh the prices, features and benefits. Bandwagon effect. This is when we agree with someone or something just because a lot of other people do or think the same thing. This could make us follow trends or groupthink, even if it goes against what we know is right. To get past it, you need to be aware of the power that your group connections may have. Think about how people act and how good they are instead of what group they belong to. In-group bias. This is when we choose family, friends and co-workers over people from other groups, even when it's not fair. If you want to get rid of this attitude, remember that recognizing it is only the first step. Actively look at your biases by seeking out different points of view, using critical thought and judging the facts without bias. This helps us think more clearly and objectively, which helps us make good decisions and deal with life's difficulties with more knowledge and understanding. So, we started down this road to get clear in our minds and learn more about ourselves. Learn about cognitive errors and, like a skilled pilot, fixing a broken compass, plan your way to a more informed and wise future. Lesson 4. Get proof and look for different points of view. Imagine choosing what you think about a complicated issue after reading only one news story or talking to someone who agrees with you. It's like painting a picture with just one color. You might be able to see some truth, but not the whole story. Why is it so important to look at things from different points of view? The Stoics, who valued logic and reason, knew how important it was to look at things from different points of view. We should do the same in today's world. Our brains tend to ignore evidence in favor of information that backs up what we already think and to look for echo chambers that support our opinions instead of ones that question them. Epicurus, a Stoic philosopher, said that what bothers us is not what we are experiencing, but what we think about it. We can better understand a subject by deliberately seeking out different answers or opposite points of view on it. It makes us more informed and aware of details and depths that we might not have seen before. We can figure out our biases and preconceptions when we listen to different points of view, admit our own biases and think about other points of view. Being aware of ourselves helps us deal with our unconscious biases better and think more carefully about what we think. Make our ideas stronger. When we come to decisions after carefully looking at all the information and points of view that are available, our opinions are stronger. For better places, to find possible weak spots and to build intellectual resilience, civil discourse is important. But how can we deliberately seek out different points of view? Here are some things that can be done. Check out reputable sources. Seek out a variety of news sources, academic journals and professional views that show a range of methods and points of view. Be aware of confirmation bias 
and look for information that goes against what you think you know. Talk to people politely. Don't be afraid to talk to people who have different opinions from you. Ask things, even if you don't agree with them. If you want to have a nice talk, remember that the goal is not to win, but to make progress and understand each other better. Accept different types of media. Read books, watch films, and listen to podcasts that give new perspectives on a wide range of topics to help you change the way you think about the world. Immerse yourself in different cultures and situations. To get out of your echo chamber, leave your safe zone and social media groups. Find groups that disagree with you and have useful conversations with them. Remember that intellectual growth often happens beyond actually questioning the evidence and that looking at different points of view doesn't mean giving up your beliefs. It just helps you understand them better. Before you go on this trip, keep Seneca's words in mind. Recognizing the complexity of the universe and cultivating intellectual humility, no matter how harsh it may seem, the truth will never hurt you. Take on the challenge, keep an open mind, and satisfy your desire to learn more. You'll learn more about the world and build a web of knowledge that shows how complicated and varied reality is. This will help you think more clearly and gain more knowledge and insight as you go through life. Fifth lesson, take your time and think. It's easy to be hasty in this fast-paced world, but being in a hurry can be dangerous in a dangerous mountain pass and it can also be very bad in our everyday lives. The Stoics, who were great at controlling themselves and acting carefully, knew how important it was to take time to think and slow down. About the well-known Stoic. Imagine going on foot at night through a dangerous mountain pass. Each step must be planned, timed, and based on close observation. Don't waste time debating what a good man should be. Be one, Emperor Marcus Aurelius famously said. Today, this quote could be seen as a lesson to make choices instead of getting stuck in fights. What makes it so important to stop, think, and gather your thoughts? Because our lives are so chaotic, we often react quickly and based on automatic and knee-jerk responses, which can lead to hasty choices, missed opportunities, and consequences we didn't expect. Many benefits can be gained by incorporating careful thought into the process of making decisions. A more complete understanding of the situation. Before making hasty choices may stop us from fully understanding the situation, getting the information we need, and weighing all of our options. By taking a moment to think, we can look at the problem from different angles, see how complicated it might be, and understand it. Emotions have less of an effect. Decisions made right now based on strong emotions may not be accurate or fair. When we slow down, we can step back from how emotionally charged the situation is right now and look at it in a more calm and reasonable way, figuring out what might happen. When we're in a hurry, we often lose sight of the bigger picture. Thinking things through helps us guess what might happen be ready for what we can't see coming and make decisions that are in line with our values and long-term goals. Self-awareness. When we stop and think, we can learn important things about our biases, emotional triggers, and how we think. But how can we make time for this in our busy lives? Here are some steps that you can take. Set aside some time to think and reflect. You should set aside time every day to think, even if it's just 10 minutes. You can write in a notebook, meditate, or just be quiet and think about your thoughts and feelings before making a choice. Ask yourself things that will help you. Take a moment to think about these questions. Did I think about all of my options? Which one should I pick? What might happen if I do? Does this decision fit with what I believe and what I want to achieve? Look for different points of view. Talk to friends, teachers, or experts you can trust about your thoughts and fears. Their comments can give you useful feedback and help you see things from a different angle. Doing mindfulness exercises, like taking deep breaths 
or focusing on the present moment can help us make decisions with more awareness. As a result, we can control our emotional responses and make smarter choices. Remember that taking time to slow down and think does not mean you are unable to make a decision or are putting things off. Instead, it means you are giving things more thought. Seneca, a Stoic philosopher, said that the best way to deal with anger is to put it off and enjoy the break. By adding these habits to your routine, you'll gain the knowledge and calmness to deal with the complicated world in a more purposeful and clear way. Take some time to think carefully and notice how your decisions get better. The sixth lesson is to trust reasoning and reason. Without a guide, it might be hard to find your way across a rough sea, and making decisions based only on our feelings can sometimes lead us wrong. Stoics believed that separation of emotions from judgment through reason was important for clear thinking. They knew about this risk because they believed that it was necessary for reason to work. This is why it's so important to use logic and reason. Emotions can make our experiences more meaningful, but they can also cloud our judgment and make us act without thinking. Distorted meanings and biased points of view. Making our thoughts more logical and based on reason can help us in many ways. How to spot stereotypes based on emotion. Emotions often set off unconscious biases that change the way we think without our being aware of it. With the help of logic and reason, we can see these flaws and get past them. Emotions can make it hard to look at the evidence objectively, so we choose the data that supports our beliefs. The facts allow us to look at the material rationally, think about it from all sides, and make decisions based on them. Because logic and reason help us spot mistakes in reasoning, feelings can make it hard to spot bad thought patterns. Reason and logic give us the ability to spot logical errors and shield us from being tricked by weak arguments, making careful choices. When our feelings take over, we often make hasty and faulty choices. Emotions are important data points that provide insights into our values, wants and wishes. Embracing reasoning and reason does not mean ignoring them totally. Rather, it means using them to help us take a step back, carefully consider our choices and decide on a course of action that is consistent with our long-term goals and values. The secret is to recognize them while fighting the want to let him feelings control our choices. To help keep this balance, here are some things that can be done. Determine what makes you feel a certain way. Consider situations that cause strong feelings. Knowing these causes gives you the ability to predict their effect and respond more strongly. When you are having strong emotions, give them names and recognize them. This small action can help you remove yourself from your emotions, allowing more limited observation. Find other points of view. Talk about your thoughts and feelings with people you know will push your emotional biases and give you honest feedback. In highly charged scenarios, don't make choices right away. Hold off on responding right away to give yourself time to calm down get information and use reasoning and reason before you make a choice. Remember that taking logic and reason does not mean putting your feelings down. Instead, it means creating a healthy relationship where feelings are present but do not control your thoughts. Use both your mental plan and the guide of reason to do this. You make decisions that are more meaningful and well thought out and you deal with life's problems more clearly. Skeptical thinker Epictetus once said that what bothers us is not the event itself, but how we think about it. Logic and reason should help you make smart choices about your ideas. This will set you on the path to a happy and meaningful future. Seventh lesson, watch out for mental capture. Have you ever been floating and all of a sudden there was a storm? The wind howls, the waves crash, and it gets harder to see. If you're not ready, 
the storm can quickly take over, flipping your boat over and leaving you vulnerable to the weather. In the same way, when our feelings are strong and out of control, they can cloud our reasoning and cause us to make hasty choices. It was easy for the Stoics to keep their cool and think clearly, so they knew this was dangerous. They thought that our emotional ruler could briefly take over our mind, making us do things we might later regret. When emotions take over, why is it so dangerous to think clearly? When our feelings are strong, our brain's warning system, the amygdala, takes over, shutting down the prefrontal cortex, the center of reason and reasoning. This primal reaction is meant for instant survival, but it can lead us wrong in everyday life. How to do it? Not being able to make good decisions. Our feelings can cloud our judgment, letting us make snap decisions that we may later regret. We might say damaging things in anger, make rash financial choices, or act out in ways that damage relationships. Distorted interpretations. Our feelings can warp our view of reality, making us see things as worse or better than they actually are. We might respond to small setbacks, elevate neutral comments, or jump to negative conclusions without proof, increasing conflict. Unexamined emotions can make arguments worse, which can cause fights, confusion, and relationships that are under a lot of stress. We could say cruel things, act angrily, or stop talking to each other. So how can we keep our emotions from taking over and get back to thinking? Because they stress self-awareness and controlling emotions, the Stoics give us some useful tools. Mindfulness. If we practice mindfulness meditation regularly, we can learn to notice our feelings as they come up. Being aware of this lets us see our feelings without judging them and lets us choose how to react. This puts some distance between the trigger and our response, which lets us lead with calm and purpose. When you're feeling stressed, just taking a few slow, deep breaths can help a lot. The fight or flight reaction can be slowed down by activating the parasympathetic nervous system. It is known that this process can help people relax and feel less anxious. It can calm the body and mind, making it easier to think clearly and giving us a feeling of peace. Restructuring our thoughts. We can question the negative ways of thinking that make us feel bad. We can ask ourselves, is this thought true? Are there other points of view? What proof backs up this idea? We can lower the strength of our emotions by changing the way we think about them. If we feel our feelings taking over, we can take a step back and mentally or physically leave the setting. We can go for a walk, listen to soothing music, or do something else that makes us feel good. This gives our feelings a place to go and lets us think more clearly. When we get back, know that emotional theft is normal and not a sign of weakness. Understanding the risks and giving ourselves these tools, on the other hand, can help us recover control of our feelings and think clearly even when life is rough. Marcus Aelius, the Stoic Emperor, said, The point of life is not to be on the side of the majority, but to be on the side of the truth. If we can control our feelings, we can stay true to our values, make good choices, and move through life with more clarity and purpose. Let's take charge of our lives, stay calm during emotional storms, and direct our thoughts toward a better, more satisfying path. Eighth lesson. Learn how to listen actively. You can't answer a puzzle that's missing bits, no matter how good you are, because you need the whole picture to do it. Understanding different points of view is important for getting through life's challenges, and active listening is the key to putting these important puzzle pieces together. A good man should be able to defend his own views without being mean to people who don't agree with them. Epicus, a well-known philosopher and part of the Stoic movement, known for promoting open conversation and clear thought, said that we should actively listen in order to understand other people's points of view, as well as to support our own. Why is hearing actively so important for clear thinking? 
A lot of the time, we listen without actively participating. We live in a fast-paced world where hearing words without knowing what they really mean can lead to mistakes, missed chances to learn, and even pointless arguments. Active listening is more than just hearing, though. It also means focusing on the speaker and not getting distracted. Focus your eyes on the person speaking and give them your full attention. Pay close attention to their tone of voice and body language. Even if you don't agree with the speaker, try to understand their thoughts, feelings and experiences. Being honest with each other is encouraged, which helps people understand the situation better. Ask for more information. Try not to talk over the speaker by fighting the urge to add your thoughts or views. Instead, let them say what they want without getting in the way of the talk. Asking questions demonstrates your interest in what they have to say and gives them the courage to go into more detail, which helps you understand their point of view. Take a moment to think about what you just heard and then quickly restate the main points of what the speaker said to show that you understand and start a new conversation. Active listening that uses these methods has many benefits, such as better understanding, more respect for different points of view, a broader understanding, and facing your biases. Less conflict. If you really understand other people's points of view, you can handle fights with respect and sensitivity, which leads to more productive conversation and stronger bonds between people. Active listening builds confidence and trust, which strengthens relationships and makes social situations better. Seeing things from different points of view can help you solve problems and understand difficult issues better, which can lead to better answers. Marcus Aurelius, another Stoic thinker, says that careful listening is more of a way of thinking than a skill. It means going into talks with an open mind, a willingness to learn, and a genuine desire to do so. If you choose to listen actively and put understanding above arguments, you'll see how your world grows with more clarity, sensitivity, and links that go deeper. Listen carefully and try to fully understand what is being said so that you can get the most useful information from it. Ninth lesson, value being clear and exact. You need to be able to think clearly and communicate clearly in order to handle life's challenges like a well-honed sword that can cut through confusion. It would be like trying to find your way through a thick jungle with a fuzzy map. Every path seems uncertain and unclear. Seneca, a Roman politician and philosopher once said, the shortest and cheapest way is to lay the cards on the table. This quote shows how important it is to be clear and precise in your thinking and speaking. This idea was very important to the Stoics, who were known for putting a lot of weight on logic and reason. Why are accuracy and clarity so important for clear thinking? Clear thought and words help us escape misunderstandings, problems that can't be solved quickly, and loss of trust. Communication that isn't clear can lead to misunderstandings and missed chances to connect. Other people may need help to understand what we want, which can be annoying and lead to arguments. When we think without certainty, it's harder to find the source of problems and come up with answers that will work. We might just deal with the simpjacks instead of fixing the root problem that makes problems keep happening. In the end, using unclear words can make us less confident and trustworthy. We can gain respect and have more of an impact in talks by using clear, accurate words. We can make changes to how we think and talk that will make things better. First, we should define important words and ideas before we talk about complicated problems. Secondly, using clear language can help break down complicated ideas into smaller, easier to understand pieces. Third, giving real life examples may help people understand our thoughts better. Fourth, we can respond to how other people react to our conversation by asking them what they think and then asking more questions to make sure we understand. Lastly, we shouldn't feel like we have to speak up every time there is a pause. 
Instead, we should take a moment to gather our thoughts before we speak. This will help us in many ways, including being precise and clear, communicating better, thinking critically, being more trustworthy, and being better at fixing problems. Clear communication helps people connect, understand, and get ready to work together in a way that benefits everyone. We think more seriously and can spot any possible gaps in our thinking when we define words, break down ideas, and use specific examples. Communication that is clear and dominant makes us seem confident and in charge, which makes our ideas more powerful. By clearly stating the issue and using language, we can also find the problem's cause and come up with answers that will work. Remember that accuracy and clarity are the building blocks of both clear thought and good communication. That way, we can better handle the complicated things in life and help others understand the world around them if we make this a habit. So, improve your thinking and recognize the power of plain words and you'll be able to understand and talk to others better. Lesson 10. Be open to learning new things all the time. Imagine a woodcutter who has to use a dull saw to cut down a big tree. The job gets harder and we could make more progress more quickly. Like a sharp saw, learning new things all the time gives your mind the power to handle life's challenges with ease and clarity. The Stoics, who were known for wanting to get better all the time, knew this well. Marcus Aurelius, who was Emperor of Rome and a Stoic teacher, told people to live as if they had 100 years to live. He was stressing how important it is to keep learning and grow as a person, why is it important to keep learning if you want to think clearly? Like muscles, our brains get weak when we don't use them. Our ability to think critically and artistically can decrease as we get used to habits and points of view that are normal to us. But continuous learning is like a powerful medicine that has many benefits. By exploring new ideas, subjects, and difficult points of view, you not only increase your knowledge, but also learn more about the world and question what you think you know. This makes you think more deeply and improves your brain speed by helping you connect ideas that don't seem to go together. Learning a new language, putting together puzzles or debating are all mentally stimulating activities that can help you keep your mind sharp and flexible. It makes your brain stronger, which makes it easier to think critically find patterns, and come to good decisions, putting your opinions to the test. We all have biases, both aware and unconscious, that can change the way we think. By hearing different points of view and doing critical self-reflection, continuous learning gives us chances to deal with these biases. This makes you more intellectually humble and gives you a more realistic view of the world getting people interested and creative. A mind that doesn't move can become bored and intellectually dull. On the other hand, learning new things all the time sparks interest and creativity. When you try new things and push yourself, you find secret talents and come up with creative answers to tough issues. What are some ways to make learning fun and a part of your daily life? Take these steps. Make learning a daily habit. Set aside time to learn, even if it's only a little. You can read stories about a wide range of topics, listen to podcasts on your way to and from work, or take online classes that interest you. Find things that will test your mind. Join a book club, have interesting talks with co-workers and friends, or take part in online groups that encourage you to think critically. Turn learning into a social activity. Talk about new ideas with family, friends, or people in online groups. Sharing your learning journey with others helps you understand it better, holds you accountable, and leads to even more study. Get out of your safe zone. Read books by authors with different points of view. Explore fields you aren't familiar with. Or go to talks on things you don't know much about. When you push your brain limits, you gain new insights and are forced to question what you think you know.
Do activities that make you think critically. Spend some time carefully analyzing news stories, looking for logical flaws in points you hear, or breaking down the way you think. This planned training makes your ability to think critically stronger. Remember that learning new things all the time isn't about getting more information for its own sake. It's about developing a growth mindset, which is an endless curiosity that drives you on a lifelong journey of intellectual discovery. We learn for life, said Seneca, another Stoic philosopher. Enjoy the trip, sharpen your mental sword, and see your ability to think clearly, grow in a world full of changing challenges and chances. So, start this journey of learning new things every day and watch as your mind changes into a strong tool that helps you deal with the challenges of life with more knowledge and clarity over time. Eleventh lesson, take care of yourself. Taking care of yourself is an important part of building a successful life. The Stoics believed in self-mastery and living a whole life. They knew that good habits and taking care of oneself were important for both clear thinking and real well-being. Thought leader Epicurus said that people are not upset by events, but by how they think about them. This realization makes it clear how important it is to take care of yourself for your mental health. The mind and body are not two different things. They are part of a complex system that is interconnected. This means that when one part of the system is hurt, it affects the other as well. There are many ways that taking care of yourself can make you smarter. Not getting enough sleep on a regular basis can make you irritable, impulsive, and bad at making decisions. Also, it can hurt your brain, making it hard to concentrate, remember things, and think seriously. Bad food habits can make you mentally dull, forget things, and have brain fog. On the other hand, a healthy diet full of brain-boosting nutrients like omega-3 fatty acids and nuts can improve your brain function. A healthy, busy lifestyle helps make sure that the brain gets enough blood flow, which increases nerve links and makes thinking better. Regular exercise, on the other hand, helps with attention, memory and brain health in general, which makes it easier to think clearly. You need to make it easier for yourself to think clearly by doing things like setting a regular sleep routine and putting quality sleep first. Set up a relaxing pattern for the evening and don't use tools for an hour before bed. Whole meals can help you reach your best level of brain health and cognitive ability. Fruits, veggies, whole grains and lean protein are some foods that are good for your health because they activate the brain. To keep your brain working at its best, eat foods that are high in omega-3 fatty acids such as walnuts, flax seeds and fatty fish. What you eat and drink should be good for your body and mind. Take care of it by eating and drinking healthy foods and drinks. It's important to keep a busy lifestyle. Whether it's swimming, dancing, team sports or fast walks, doing something you enjoy will make it more fun. You can reach your goals if you set aside 30 minutes every day to work out. Regular exercise can improve your brain's ability to think and remember things, increase blood flow and lower your attention, all of which can help you focus and think more clearly. It may help to use calm methods like yoga, deep breathing or meditation to deal with worry more effectively and clear your mind. Being aware of your thoughts and feelings without judging them helps you find damaging thought patterns that might be affecting the way you think and replace them with more objective views. Don't waste time arguing about what a good man should be like. Instead, be someone who puts health first, works to keep their mind and body healthy, and values their ability to think clearly. You can foster clear thinking, mental resilience, and a life with more focus, purpose, and accomplishment by making healthy habits and self-care a top priority. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor, said, Blossom and let life guide you toward a fully satisfying and meaningful life. 
but keep in mind that following these stoic ideas is a process that needs regular work, not something that can be done all at once. As you apply these lessons to your daily life, you'll notice a change in your outlook, an improvement in your ability to deal with problems head-on and a renewed sense of being in charge of your thoughts and actions. Starting this trip that will change you, develop a stoic mindset and use all of your brain's full potential. Marcus Aurelius said that the mind is the only place that is truly peaceful and free from disturbances. Take a break to question your own soul and then come back to face what's waiting for you. From 161 AD to 180 AD, Marcus Aurelius was Emperor of Rome. He was thought to be the last of the five good emperors of his time. Meditations are a collection of his own works about his life. In it, he always said to try to live a calm life, and in his prayers, he often talked about how important it was to get up early and stay up all day. He also stressed how important it was to take time to calm down and be alone. Because of his papers, we have a good idea of what he would have done at night. Now I'm going to talk about 10 things Marcus Aurelius would have done at night or in the late afternoon, and how we can follow his habits or change them to fit our own lives. First, get rid of all outside stimulation. Marcus Aurelius says that you can go inside and take a break whenever you want. It is known that Marcus Aurelius took time to relax in the evenings. He is best known for his philosophy that says we should live each day as if it were our last. But he also felt that he should take time to quiet his mind and recharge. This was something he did to get rid of worry or bad thoughts, getting away from outside influences and finding meaning in self-reflection. Outside influences are changes in the world or information we get from our senses. These days, we are constantly being affected by outside factors, especially when we use technology and connect with other people. To meet the surface needs of today's society, we put too much on our plates, and our days are now full of commitments, meetings, emails, due dates, and chores. We give up our freedom and peace of mind, and no matter how hard we try to balance work and personal life, we always feel tired, worried, and overwhelmed when we get home. When we get home at night, we generally watch TV, catch up on social media, or try to answer those last-minute emails. We need to cut down on the distractions and clear our thoughts. So, the time you set aside for yourself at night should be spent on your practice. It's possible that you'll have to give up a lot of the things you've been doing in the evenings and find new ones that will really help you relax and focus on yourself. This means turning off all electronics at least 30 minutes before bed and trying to relax. This can be something as easy as a five-minute guided meditation, a body scan, or some deep breathing. Mindfulness meditation can help you slow down a mind that is racing and pay attention to your body. Engaging in this kind of meditation can be like taking a vacation inside ourselves, and doing it every night can be very helpful. Meditation has been shown to lower stress, boost happiness, and make sleep much better. The things you do before bed should be a break from the busy world and a time to be alone with yourself. Watching a lot of TV shows, playing video games, hanging out with friends, or looking through social media might seem like a good way to relax, but they don't really help you calm down. In fact, they make it harder to find. Even though sleep is important, it doesn't always help you feel better after a busy day. Something that lets your mind shut off needs to be a part of a truly relaxing nighttime habit. Number two, work out your muscles. Marcus Aurelius says that it is a shame for a man to get old and not see how beautiful and strong his body is. Marcus Aurelius lived almost 2000 years ago, but he knew how important it was to work out. Physicists thought that you can't have a healthy mind without a healthy body. 
The Stoics thought that even a simple exercise practice could teach us good things about life, like how to be patient, improve ourselves, be disciplined, deal with problems, and boost our confidence. We knew that using these skills to master ourselves was more important than getting praise from other people. That's not what the media would have us believe. The Stoics knew that trying to look good just to show off rarely leads to real happiness. Many of us put off working out by saying things like, I'm too tired, I have an important meeting tomorrow and I don't want to be in pain, or I'm so stressed at work that I can't even think about working out. There are many reasons why people do this, but we shouldn't completely avoid it as part of our routine. Endorphins are chemicals in the brain that make you feel good. Any kind of exercise is good for you, whether you work out at home or go to the gym. These make you feel better and less stressed. Some people even say that working out at night can help them fall asleep faster, which will make you feel better and ready for the next day. Taking a quick walk in the evening can also help you clear your mind and breathe. As you walk, pay attention to what's going on around you. Take your mind off of the deep thoughts you've been having all day and picture the night sky full of stars. Also, slowly move your body. Enjoying the beauty of nature will help you relax and get ready for bed after a long day. Third, get ready for the morning. Getting up early every morning was very important to Marcus Aurelius, who said, do not delay your actions. He did this to set up a daily pattern that would help him make the most of every moment of his life. This way, sleep would be seen as a time to recharge, not as a chance to be lazy. Aurelius had to have a routine in the morning, but part of that pattern started the night before, when he got ready for the next day. It was common for people before the Stoics to get ready for the next day by planning out what they wanted to do and how they thought different outcomes might play out. It is known that many Stoics did the same thing in the evening as well as the morning. To begin, you can get ready the night before to make getting up easy. This could mean choosing what to wear the next day, getting your bag ready for work, or making sure you have a clear plan for the morning. It's kind of like a list of things you need to do, but you don't have to think about what to do because you chose what to do the night before. Remember that choices become less useful the more you make them during the day. Allow yourself to think about small things like what to wear. This is good for your health and makes getting up more comfortable. Getting ready for the next day in the evening will not only help you in the morning, but it may also make you feel less stressed about the things you need to do when you wake up. Having fun with family is number four. According to Marcus Aurelius, people who live longer and people who die soon both lose the same thing, the present. This is because the present is all you have, what you have, and what you don't have. Marcus Aurelius liked to spend time with his family at the end of the day. He really cared about his wife and kids. He never forgot about them, even though he was busy, popular, and important. He would stroke and kiss his kids, even in the afternoon, and tell himself in his head not to hurry. That might be the last time you do that. I don't think either of them will make it through the night. He kissed her and enjoyed what was in front of her eyes, which was the most important thing in his life. He then told her good night. He did this over and over again until he was lucky enough to stay alive. Thinking about death is a way for Stoics to remember how short life is. A famous nurse in Australia spent her whole career taking care of people who were dying. She said that one of the main things that dying people regret is not having enough time to spend with their families. Due to the pressures of modern life, their parents often felt bad about missing their kids' childhood and not being there for their wives. Family members rarely spend more than 30 minutes of quality time together during the week. And when they do get to spend time together, many parents say that their kids spend it quietly in front of the TV because they are too tired to talk or reading books. Like the Stoics, we should often think about our own deaths and remember ourselves that neither we nor our children will wake up to enjoy the beauty of our lives. This will help us start living, 
make changes to spend more time with our families and tell them we love them. Getting together with family is a big part of making strong love bonds and ties between family members. Spending time with family helps you deal with problems, makes you feel safe, strengthens family values, and gives kids faith in themselves. Fifth, go over your day. Marcus Aurelius said that the only thing that can really broaden the mind is the ability to look into everything that comes up in your life in a methodical and honest way. Stoics think that the best times to think are in the morning and at night. To get ready for the next day, they suggest writing down your thoughts in a book in the morning, and at night, they suggest thinking back on the day that has passed. Marcus Aurelius wrote his notes so that he could get a better understanding of his own life and thoughts. He always kept a close eye on what he did and decided every day. The Stoics say that being aware of your deeds is very important. They also say that you should take some time at the end of each day to think about what happened as a way to become more mindful in general. For Stoics, this kind of attention is a form of mindfulness that makes you aware of your behaviors and checks to see if they are in line with your better self. Stoics say that this kind of daily thought is like arguing your case in court. You remember and judge your day by looking back at the things you did and decided each day and then going through them in a planned way. This isn't meant to be a critical exercise. It's meant to be a kind look at yourself that will help you make better choices in the future. This kind of daily review can become part of your evening habit if you take some time before bed to think about the day that was, including the time you woke up and the present moment, as well as the decisions and actions you took. What did you do well today? What kinds of feelings have you had? What part of your day made you feel bad? Just think about what you can learn from today. What do you want to have done today but didn't? In Stoic philosophy, it's important to think about things every day. Writing down what we want to do today helps us get ready for the next day. Also, they help us figure out if the things we do every day are in line with the person we really want to become. When you take a step back and think about your day, you might re-evaluate a certain event. For example, let's say you had a tense talk with the coffee seller in the morning because of a mistake. You're aware that this event messed up your mood and made you feel bad and irritable for the rest of the morning. Instead of letting it control you, think about how much time you spent thinking about it and figuring out how it made you feel. You think about how you could have handled the situation differently or understand that the event wasn't that important when compared to other things that happened that day. The more you think about it, the more likely it is that you will stay cool and handle things with more confidence in the future. An important part of adopting Stoicism is taking time in the evening to think about things like this. This helps you learn from your mistakes and live a more aware and busy life. Before we go any further, I'd like to thank everyone for coming along, seeking information and giving up stupidity. Giving up stupidity is the best thing a person can do and you have done it. Sixth, think about how wise you are by nature. Marcus Aurelius said that to be good at reading and writing, you need to be a master. Life needs a lot more. Someone is smart if they have a lot of experience in a certain area and are known for their knowledge, understanding, and good judgment. Many people look up to this person and want to be like them. Stoics think a lot about their wise ones and whether their deeds are in line with those wise ones. Marcus Aurelius regarded Zeno as his wise one and frequently asked himself, what would Zeno do? It's important to have a clear picture of this person so you can think about whether your actions are in line with your role model. As part of your evening routine, think about your role model and ask yourself, have you behaved in a way that your role model would have? What can you change tomorrow to make your life more like your role model? What traits of your role model did you see in yourself today? 
Taking a few minutes to think about the things that happened to you today and whether you behaved in a way that you think your role model would have can help you become more aware of. Seventh, take a look at things from a higher level. According to Marcus Aurelius, you should think about problems in their fullness, where you only have a short and passing moment to work with, and how small your contributions are to the plans of fate. Marcus Aurelius says that we should look at life from a cosmic point of view, which is another name for above. If you want to get a bigger picture of your life, you can look at yourself and your day from a third-person point of view. This will help you get rid of your own feelings and fears. It is known that Aurelius thought about his life from the point of view of the world in the evenings to get past his own limited view. The world we live in now has a lot of distractions, there are ads, news stories, views, and other things that can distract us every time we leave the house. We talk on the phone, listen to the radio, watch TV, or use our computers when we're not at work or with family. All of this makes you mentally tired. It's tough to find room to breathe and think. Apps, games, movies, and TV shows all keep our attention. It's hard to deal with our problems, fears, stress, and obligations when we're focused on other things. Taking a higher viewpoint, which is a practice based on the Stoic principle, can help us deal with our problems more effectively by putting them in perspective from a higher level. You can begin by taking some time to be still in the evening and notice what's going on around you. You start to think about how they might feel, how you connect to them, and what problems, hopes, and fears they might have. This includes your body, your home, and the people you live with. Then, take a step back and look at your own city. All the people who live there have unique lives that you don't know about. Like you, they have goals, dreams, and fears. Keep broadening your view until you can see your country, and then even further, until you can see the whole world. Think about all the people on Earth and how our lives are spread out across different countries, social classes, races, and traditions. Think about the problems that people who aren't as lucky are having. Keep reaching out to the universe, the solar system, and everything else in the world. When we look at ourselves from above, we see that we are not different beings who have nothing to do with the things around them. Instead, we see that we are a part of a bigger picture and are involved in everything around us. Looking at ourselves from the outside helps us be more realistic about ourselves and the things that bother us. We can see our worries, fears and problems more clearly and with less feeling when we separate ourselves from them. This also gives us a better chance of figuring out what causes them and how to fix them it gets easier to put things in their proper context. Should someone insult you and make you feel bad, try this practice. Putting things in perspective helps us get past the mental problems we're having. When compared to other problems, small differences and fights don't seem important. When we compare our problems to those of other people or to the vastness of space, many of them may go away. Eighth, take a moment to relax. Always keep in mind that a peaceful mind is more likely to lead to a happy life than a lot of stuff. Turn down the lights to make the room feel calm, lay down to unwind, and close your eyes to calm your mind. When things are quiet, understanding grows. When you are calm and ready to think about Marcus Aurelius's practices, he told himself to get rid of any thoughts that were getting in the way of his good judgment. He also wrote a strong reminder Get rid of your hurt feelings and the wounds will go away. This way of thinking goes deep. When we change how we see things, our problems often go away. You always have the choice to stick to your own opinion and not let the chaos of views affect you. Often, you don't need to upset your soul or let things happen that are out of your power do so. Things outside of our control don't need our opinion and don't gain anything from being praised or criticized. Staying away from these kinds of opinions is the only way to keep your inner peace. Tranquility is more than just not having any noise or strife. It's also having order in your thoughts. 
It's about making sure that your internal government rules over your outward situations and that your ideas and actions are in line with each other. Marcus Aurelius thought that being in charge of your own life was necessary for peace to grow. He thought that this kind of peace came from the strength and order of one's inner world, not from outside forces. Follow this habit every day, and the Stoic philosophy will lead you to a life of ease, virtue, and peace. Let these times of reflection be the things that make your life stronger and more beautiful. 9. Get your body and mind ready to sleep. Take some time to rest. Thank your body for letting you move, rest, and find peace at the end of the day. Marcus Aurelius said that in the soul there is a place to rest that is more peaceful and calm than any other place. When you find your mind wandering about what awaits you Jack Oro, or how you will start the new day, we ask you to remember the following words from Marcus Aurelius. When you get up in the morning, tell yourself that the people who I will meet today will be curious, ungrateful, arrogant, dishonest, jealous, and certainly they are like that because they do not know how to distinguish good from evil. But I have seen the beauty of good and the ugliness of evil, and I have recognized that the evildoer has a nature related to mine, not of the same blood or birth, but of the same spirit, and that he is a part of the divine possesses these and therefore none of them can harm me. No one can burden me in my ugliness, I can't even be angry with my relatives or hate them. We were born to work together, like feet, hands and eyes, like the two rows of upper and lower teeth, to hinder each other. It's not natural when you're angry with someone, give them your back to you. That's something unnatural. Tenth, make time today to plan your jackaro. Open your journal and write down your hopes, dreams, goals and what you want from each day. Also, write down the things you want to achieve by the end of the day. When you're ready, you can send it to me after you draw the picture of Jack Wednesday. Don't forget to add a few lines of words that will comfort your soul like the sun's warm rays. If you feel nervous, don't be afraid to question yourself and look inside for the valuable traits that will help you succeed. If you don't want to write, read philosophy for at least an hour, or even just 10 minutes to clear your mind and get stronger. When Marcus Aurelius ruled his kingdom, he had to deal with a lot of problems and conflicts. In his meditations, he talked about how to control his confusing thoughts and deep pain. One truth that always surprised him and that he wanted to share was that we love ourselves more than anyone else. But we also care a lot about what other people think about us. We didn't listen to our inner voice which told us that if someone could show him a mistake in his actions or thoughts, he would change right away because he wants to know the truth, which doesn't hurt anyone. Harm only happens when we refuse to let go of our false beliefs and stupidity. Hold on to yourselves. If you want to live a happier life, you need to be dedicated and follow a full plan every night. While the list of 10 things you should do every night is a good start for taking care of yourself, and getting ready for the next day, there are many more things you can do that will improve your health. Adopting new habits can make a big difference in your personal growth and daily healing. Let's look at five equally important habits that you can easily add to your evening routine to make sure you're handling your night in a complete way. The first habit is that everything should be eaten in balance. Too much should be limited. This old philosophy tells us to be self-controlled in all parts of our lives, even when we're tempted by tasty foods, alcoholic drinks, or any other kind of pleasure that could make us lose our inner peace. The key is to have strong willpower. These days, we're always connected, so our minds are often filled with updates, messages that need to be returned, and emails that need our attention. But it's very important that we don't let these digital distractions get in the way of clear thinking or the peace of meditating. Marcus Aurelius' wise words always ring true in these times, telling us that peace is not impossible to reach. Every time you want, you can go inside and do something. 
This strong encouragement makes us want to hide in the safety of our own minds and find comfort in the stillness of knowing ourselves. By doing this, we use the power to stay cool even when things are going crazy around us, keeping the fortress of peace safe from the storms of daily life. Second habit, forgiving someone is a deep act that helps us see how lucky and valuable life is with all of its ups and downs. Being alive is the most valuable gift that every morning brings. It's easy to get caught up in problems and fears as the day goes on. However, forgiveness helps us remember how human we are and encourages us to let go of our worries throughout the day. It's not only when we forgive others that our relationships with ourselves get better. Being self-aware is so important that Marcus Aurelius said, Today I escaped anxiety, or better yet, I discarded it because it was within me, in my own perceptions. These words make us want to find comfort and strength within ourselves, understanding that our inner state is the key to peace. We can choose to stay strong no matter what happens in the outside world, like a rare rock that keeps its color and calm inside. As a sign of hope, the ability to forgive reminds us that when we accept forgiveness, we release the true human spirit within us. Third habit, be thankful for what you have. These days, the picture we see has a lot of different colors, from the hard ones that make us wait to the happy ones that make our hearts melt. There are important lessons waiting to be woven into the fabric of our lives that are hidden in this painting. As we stand on the edge of the present moment, let go of the pain, the shadows of fear, the hesitation that stops us, and the questions that keep us from moving forward. Think of these loads slowly going away, like old stories slowly disappearing into the river of time. You have the amazing power to choose right now when you are reading this. Pick the freedom from pain and let thanks show you the way. Be thankful for both the beautiful things in life and the important lessons they teach you. Life is a gentle teacher that is always ready to teach us. Take a moment to think about the many things that have happened to you today. Every sound, no matter how happy or sad, is an important part of the big orchestra that is your life. Allow your thankfulness to shine like a sparkling light along your path. Picture yourself as a stargazer looking up at the night sky and seeing the cosmic fabric that it is. Take a look at the stars, which used to tell stories, and picture yourself dancing with them as part of the cosmic dance. Right now, you are in charge of your own life, and the world is your painting. These things give your goals a sense of determination and purpose. Take on the difficulties because you know they will help you grow. Take pleasure in the gifts and value them as signs of grace. Take advantage of the lessons. They will lead you to your true self. You are the artist, and today is your work in progress. Be thankful, enjoy your freedom, and let the stars guide your life. Fourth habit. Don't worry about anything and take it easy. Let go of all your stress, worries, fears, and regrets starting today. Think about how relaxed you are now that the day is over and you've made it through. Today is over for you. Now is the time to find peace and get ready for tomorrow. Think about the problems you had to deal with today and be proud of how strong you were to get through them. Marcus Aurelius said, if something outside of you bothers you, it's not the thing itself that bothers you, it's your judgment of it, and you can change your judgment at any time. Accept that your perspective shapes your reality and choose to see the world with peace in your mind. You could say that the soul is colored by the thoughts that go through it. Think of good things, be determined, and have hope. Imagine a painting where the bright colors of your dreams and goals fill your mind and heart. This is because you have the power to make your life full of peace and unwavering drive. Let go of your worries tonight and enjoy the peace of the night. Tomorrow, Jackaro is like a clean canvas, ready for you to paint it with the colors of potential. Rest and let your soul find peace. When you wake up, you'll be ready to face the next part of your trip. 
Fifth habit, moving forward with peace of mind. There are times in life when you're unhappy and feel bad about what happened that day. It's normal to wish that some things had gone differently, but the truth is that you can't change the past. But try to take comfort in the fact that any problems or obstacles you face won't last forever. The events in your life are like threads that are sewn together to make up your fate. Marcus Aurelius said almost 2,000 years ago, accept whatever comes to you as part of the thread of your own fate. These words still speak to us today, telling us to live in the present and find peace and acceptance in it. You get stronger and smarter so that you can handle Jack O'Rourke's problems. Every event, good or bad, makes your journey special and they all add to the beautiful fabric of your life. Thus, let understanding guide your fate and let it lead you to a better future. The comfort zone, which is often formed by habit and fear of the unknown, is not only harmful to our growth, but also to who we are and what we can become. Drawing on Stoicism, an old guide for people seeking inner strength and emotional control, this piece dives into important insights for breaking free from this hidden cage. First, understand that unease is a sign of growth on our journey through life. There are times when we are challenged, when we are pushed past our normal limits and feel uncomfortable. At first glance, these kinds of events might seem bad, but they hide deep truths and important lessons. Epicurus, a famous Stoic philosopher, gave us a paradigm shift when he said that what makes us uneasy is how we react to events, not the events themselves. We shouldn't see pain as an enemy. Instead, we should see it as a strict but fair guide that pushes us past our limits. This guide's goal is not to beat us, but to shape us through suffering, making us stronger and smarter in the end. At the heart of this unease is the potential for growth and change. Imagine that you are a raw gem. Just like how heat and pressure can turn carbon into a diamond, hard times can shape our personalities and bring out our hidden strength and beauty. As we face each obstacle, we see it as a hidden chance to grow and strengthen who we are. As a result, when things happen that make you leave your comfort zone, take a moment to see them not as problems, but as opportunities to grow. Remember that every piece of comfort in your life is an important part of making it a beautiful work. Each task should be met with courage and an open mind, because that's how you'll reach your full potential. This shift in perspective may be hard, but it has huge benefits. By taking this stance, you can not only get through hard times, but you can also turn your trip into an adventure where you learn about yourself and grow. No longer does discomfort stop you. Instead, it challenges you to get past it, calling you to the journey of life, where every step out of your comfort zone is a chance to grow as a person. So, to sum up, let your pain guide you and teach you. It should shape you, test you, and most of all, teach you. This will not only help you get through hard times, but it will also make you stronger, wiser, and better prepared for future tests in your life. This exemplifies the essence of personal development, a trip not of ease, but of resilience, resolve, and a steadfast dedication to becoming your best self. Next, give up your desire for control from outside sources. As we continue to learn more about ourselves and grow, let's look at another wise quote. This one comes from Marcus Aurelius, who was a great Roman emperor and a dedicated Stoic. He gives us wise advice that will last forever. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This saying sums up a key truth about freedom and control. In areas where we often feel like we are victims of outside forces, like at work, in personal relationships, or in everyday life, the constant search for outside control becomes a source of anger and unhappiness. 
Marcus Aurelius's insight makes us rethink our point of view and realize that while we can't control the ups and downs of life, we do have complete control over our inner world. So, true freedom doesn't come from changing our environment to fit our needs. Instead, it comes from building a strong mind that can handle any storm with calm and determination. This means learning to accept the things that can't be changed and focusing our energy on the things we can change, like how we think, feel and act. We go through a big metamorphosis when we accept this realization. We go from being slaves to our desires, to control the uncontrolled, to being masters of our minds. This change in perspective is freeing. It gives us the tools to go through life with more peace and confidence, knowing that no matter what happens around us, we have full control over our reactions and feelings. You are a seasoned sailor going through waters that haven't been explored before. Even though you can't control the winds and waves, you can change your sails and find the best way to get where you want to go. Life is like this, unexpected and scary a lot of the time, but you can always find your way back to yourself with the help of your inner sense of reason and resilience. So, I invite you to think about the parts of your life where your need for outside control has made you less energetic. Ask me what really falls under my control. You'll find strength in your ability to choose your stance in the face of life's risks as you think about yourself. Adopting this way of thinking will not only give you the energy that Marcus Aurelius talked about, but it will also help you live a happier, more worthwhile life. You learn to value your own independence more than the unpredictable things going on around you, and you find peace and happiness no matter where you are. Basically, when we give up the illusion of outward control and focus on things we can really change, we start a journey of self-discovery and strength. This epijackizes a life of purpose and peace, one that is guided not by upheavals outside, but by a light inside that gives you wisdom and peace. Last but not least, turn problems into stepping stones. As we sail through life, we will always face waves of problems that seem impossible to overcome. But Marcus Aurelius's timeless wisdom reminds us of a powerful truth. What stops action makes action happen. What blocks the path becomes the path. This new way of thinking encourages us to see each problem not as a barrier, but as a valuable chance for growth and self-evolution. Our resilience and flexibility are actually being built by the obstacles we encounter on our journey. Each trial is like a strict teacher whose lessons aren't meant to stop us, but to make us stronger. By facing these challenges head-on instead of avoiding them, we make it possible for skills and virtues to grow that might not have been present in easier times. To see problems as opportunities for growth, you need to be creative and change your point of view. It makes us think, how can this situation work out for me? What skills can I work on in this situation? What hidden lesson does this trial teach? These kinds of questions help us get past the first problems and into a world of possibilities and research. Think of each problem as a rock in your life stream. You can either get around it and stay safe in known waters, or you can use it as a pivot to push yourself into new rushing waters. Choosing the second option not only gets you past the problem, but it also takes you to new areas of your skills and opportunities. Using alchemy to turn problems into milestones is a long-lasting way to learn and improve yourself. Every obstacle we bravely and resolutely overcome reveals more about who we are, our strengths and weaknesses, and how to get past our limits. This stance also gets us ready for the trials that are coming. It encourages a growth mindset that gives us the power to face life with a positive and aggressive attitude. As we grow, we become more flexible and bendable, able to handle life's changes and difficulties with more skill and confidence. I want to make an offer to you. Choose to live each moment with meaning and purpose for 30 days. Don't put things off or be afraid of failing. 
Look for every chance to improve. Always remember that real change starts with conscious action. If you agree to take on this task, write new beginnings next to today's date. I will then recognize your dedication and make sure you remember this promise. Let's move on. Additionally, work on selective separation. Stoic lessons give us a powerful tool for navigating life's confusing situations with calm and purpose. A practice called apatheia, which means selective detachment, is not the same as apathy or withdrawal from our surroundings. Instead, it means choosing not to let outside factors upset our inner balance. By adopting selective separation, we focus on things that are within our control, like how we act, how we react, and how we think. This method involves consciously separating ourselves from things like material pleasures, social views, and events happening outside of our control. By doing this, we not only save our energy for activities that are in line with our core values, but we also cultivate an inner freedom that gives us the strength to face life with more courage and determination. In this way, selective separation is a choice about where to focus our attention and energy. In a world full of stimuli and constant requests, being able to tell the difference between stimuli that make us feel something and those that make us feel calm is a skill that is worth having. This doesn't mean ignoring problems or avoiding our responsibilities to make society better as a whole. Instead, it means taking a thoughtful position in which our actions are guided by purpose and meaning rather than impulsive thoughts or distractions. Think of your mind as a safe place. When you practice selective separation, you carefully choose the seeds you want to plant and care for in this holy place. By choosing seeds that are in line with your values and goals, you can create an inner landscape that grows without being bothered by small fears and short-lived discomforts. This sacred space inside you turns into a place of peace and strength, allowing you to face the world with clarity and drive. Allowing selective detachment also means accepting that life is temporary and unpredictable. Realizing that many parts of our lives are out of our control lets us focus on the things we can really change, like the choices we make and how we act when life presents us with challenges and opportunities. We can also make room in our lives for deeper, more meaningful activities when we let go of the constant need for praise or material gain and adopt a detached attitude towards social joys and distractions. As individuals, we can commit to interests, relationships and projects that truly make us better and help the greater good. Finally, think about your beliefs again. Stoicism encourages us to think deeply and regularly about our values, pushing us to tell the difference between temporary whims and the real needs that make up a meaningful life. This trip of self-reflection is necessary to free ourselves from the draw of comfort, extravagance and fake stability, which tend to trap us in a state of mediocrity and laziness. When we look at our values again, we are forced to question the rules and standards of society that shape how we see success and happiness. For this process to work, we have to be honest about what our real values are and what ones are just reflections of goals set by others. By telling these apart, we can start to separate ourselves from outside forces and move in a direction that is more in line with our true values and deepest goals. This re-evaluation is not a one-time thing. It is an ongoing process that requires being alert and ready to deal with pain. It can be both upsetting and freeing to realize that many of the things we think we need are actually conditioned wants. It helps us figure out what's not important and get rid of it so we can focus on what really makes our lives better and helps us grow as people and as spiritual beings. When we can tell the difference between temporary wants and real needs, we can live purposeful, focused lives instead of always running after new things 
or attention from others. We start to value the relationships, hobbies and events that make us happy, healthy and help us grow as people. We are better able to live lives of greater authenticity, satisfaction and meaning as a result of our beliefs being reset. By letting go of the golden handcuffs, we also become better able to deal with the ups and downs of life. Depending on outside comforts and safety nets leaves us open to life's natural changes and unknowns. On the other hand, valuing inner qualities like persistence, gratitude and understanding gives us the strength to handle life's storms with grace and bravery. We can free ourselves from the chains of delay and fear by practicing awareness and conscious involvement. We learn to value every experience, every problem and every happy moment as important parts of our journey. This way gives us the power to live our lives more fully, using the present to shape the future we want instead of just waiting for it to come. As we learn more about Stoic knowledge and accept the unchangeable, we find a principle that can help us navigate life's rough seas, the embrace of the immovable. This basic idea, which is important for inner peace, shows how important it is to recognize and welcome life's constant change. Seeing that the only thing that stays the same is change. This path to acceptance isn't one of giving up. It's one of understanding and strength, reminding ourselves that even though we can't control everything that happens around us, we can control how we react inside. Adopting this principle frees us from a lot of the pain that comes from fighting what we can't change and trying in vain to make reality fit our desires. Fighting what you know is going to happen is like grabbing at water. You can't catch it and all you end up with is anger. On the other hand, when we let the natural flow happen, we can enjoy both the beauty of its movement and the peace that comes with going with its natural pace. This way of thinking doesn't mean being passive when bad things happen. It means focusing on areas where we can really make a difference. Being able to tell the difference between what we can affect and what is beyond us is a big part of the art of acceptance. It takes humility to recognize our limitations and courage to face life with an open heart, knowing that we can adapt and have resilience in the face of uncertainty and the uncontrollable. Think of yourself as a strong tree. Even though the seasons change, the winds change, and the rain and snow come and go, you stay stable, strong, and flexible. You don't fight the gales. Instead, you give in to them, being flexible and letting the leaves blow with the wind as needed. This is what acceptance is all about, being able to stay strong and do well, no matter what other people think or do. Develop your independence. Self-reliance stands out as one of the most powerful ideas in the Stoic school of thought. It teaches us that real happiness and peace don't come from things we buy or praise from other people, but from the wealth in our own hearts. Self-reliance means developing a source of happiness and satisfaction inside you that is not affected by outside factors. This point of view goes against common beliefs that link happiness to success or approval from others. But when we learn to be self-reliant, we find a kind of freedom that can't be found anywhere else. The freedom to be ourselves, no matter what other people think or do. Being self-reliant means committing to our own growth, seeking self-awareness and strengthening our core. It has to do with appreciating silence and understanding that while relationships with other people are important and beneficial, the most important relationship is the one with oneself. As we work on being happy inside, we start to see material things and praise from other people as things that make us better, not as the source of our happiness. This point of view doesn't mean we reject outside factors. It just means we need to rethink their place in our lives. Think of your happiness as plants that you care for in the yard of your life. Self-reliance makes it possible for this plant life to grow well, even when the weather changes outside. To feed this plant life, 
you need to spend time doing soul-nourishing things like reading, meditating, or making art, which bring peace and happiness. Self-reliance also means accepting yourself as you are, flaws and all. It encourages us to honor our humanity and recognizes that real growth comes from loving and accepting yourself. Take a neutral point of view. A calm stance is an important part of Stoic thought. It's a powerful way to handle life's ups and downs with balance and good sense. This concept says that we should not let our emotions affect what's going on around us. This way, we can look at our situations with objectivity and clarity. This doesn't mean denying your feelings or living a life without desire, but it does mean that even though emotions are a big part of who we are, they don't have to control our choices or how we see things. Taking a step back from events and looking at them without any bias helps us see things from different points of view and choose the path that fits our values and goals the best. Think of yourself as a director looking at the scene as in your life through the lens of a camera. This comparison helps us understand how valuable it is to look at our lives as if we were watching them from afar, giving us a bigger picture and a deeper understanding of what is happening. From this point of view, answers are more likely to be planned rather than impulsive ones that could lead to guilt or make things more complicated. Having a neutral point of view also means realizing that our problems are often made worse by our own interpretations and emotional reactions. By taking a more objective view, we can see problems for what they really are without adding to the story. This helps us find better answers and reduces unnecessary stress. A neutral point of view can also help people understand and accept each other. By separating ourselves from our feelings, we make it easier to see things from different points of view, which leads to more cooperative and helpful interactions. Improve understanding and kindness. As we learn more about Stoic lessons, we are pushed to develop kindness and understanding, which are important for living a happy and fulfilling life. This advice tells us to understand how others feel and see things from their point of view. This is not only a kind thing to do, but also a necessary thing to do in order to build patience, tolerance, and eventually peace. Empathy, or being able to understand how someone else feels, helps people connect with each other by breaking down obstacles. It helps us understand the thoughts, feelings, and situations that are causing other people to act in ways that seem strange or illogical at first. When we show empathy, we open our hearts to the wide range of human situations and recognize that our problems and hopes are similar. Seeing the world through someone else's eyes also makes us more humble and open, which helps us resist snap judgments and respect how complicated people are. This method doesn't mean that everyone agrees with or supports everything that is done. Instead, it tries to get to the bottom of where things come from. This kind of understanding makes it possible for more subtle and sensitive exchanges, which improves conversation and builds stronger ties. When people are fighting or disagreeing, empathy and understanding are even more important. Being able to see things from other people's points of view and understand what they're going through can be the first step toward peaceful answers. Instead of being guarded, approaching others with interest and openness creates an atmosphere that is good for understanding and peace. Along with this, as our empathy grows, we become better able to change the world for the better. Being aware of other people's needs and problems makes you want to help them, whether it's through mental support or working together to solve a problem. Be brave in your everyday life. Stoicism's deep well of knowledge includes the courage to face and get past your fears. This way of thinking says that real bravery isn't being fearless, but being determined to face and get over your fears. It constantly challenges us to step outside of our comfort zones, test our limits, and get closer to our true selves with each brave act. Therefore, 
courage is a choice. The determination to go ahead, even when you're scared or doubtful. Each time we choose to face the unknown, or make a step toward a goal when we don't know what will happen, it unlocks our courage by showing us our natural strength, resilience, and ability to overcome amorphosis. Being courageous every day doesn't mean taking unnecessary risks or ignoring real dangers. It means knowing when fear is a good thing and when it gets in the way of growth. We need to be brave to make these kinds of decisions, to weigh our choices not based on how fearless we are, but on our most important values and goals. Every trip outside of our comfort zones, no matter how big or small, is a celebration of our victory over fear. These projects lay the groundwork for a road that leads to our true selves, the parts of us that are in line with our biggest dreams and goals. When we act despite our fears, we not only open up new possibilities, but we also boost our confidence and faith in our ability to handle life's challenges. Think of your path to personal growth as a climb up a difficult peak. The ground is steep and the path isn't always clear. There are times when the fear of falling is too great to bear. Still, every step you take forward and hold on tighter brings you closer to the top. You become smarter, stronger, and most importantly, more aware of how brave you are as you go through deep change. This path isn't for the weak-hearted. You need to be strong inside, willing to face the unknown, and able to see past temporary ease to long-term growth. For those brave enough to take this trip, the benefits are immeasurable. Freedom, peace, and a life full of meaning and purpose. We are capable of a lot more than our fears and comforts make us think. Accepting these somber lessons helps us reach our full potential and live lives that reflect our highest goals. Not only does this lesson tell us to face problems, it also tells us to completely change our lives. Incorporating Stoicism into your morning habit can help you feel good about the day ahead and build resilience, knowledge, and inner peace. These 10 habits, based on the Stoic philosophy, can change the way you start your day and the rest of it. First, get up early. Stoics believe in discipline and living a purposeful life, which is shown by the fact that they get up early every day. Stoics love to make pictures of the ideals of self-control, self-reflection, and strategy planning in the early morning. These ideas are deeply rooted in Stoic philosophy. Stoics believe that discipline is more than just following the rules to the letter. It's also choosing to organize your life with purpose. Getting up early is a physical representation of this commitment. It marks the start of a day ruled by choices instead of reactions. Early morning silence is a great place to be alone and think about yourself, which is a key part of Stoic knowledge. In the calmness of dawn, people can think about their deeds, feelings and ideas independently. In the stillness of the early morning, Stoics become more self-aware, which helps them deal with the difficulties that lie ahead. According to Stoicism, planning is very important for getting through life well. Stoics get up early so they have time to think strategically and plan ahead. This sets the tone for a day that is shaped by purpose rather than chance. It gives you a quiet place to plan your actions so that they are in line with Stoic values like moderation and knowledge. Additionally, getting up early fits with the stern view that time goes by quickly. The morning is a blank slate for mindful living a reflection that each day is limited and should be used carefully. Stoics have the courage to make the most of their awake time because they are aware of how quickly time passes, which gives them a sense of urgency and purpose in their work. Stoics think that having a morning practice is important for living a good life. Getting up early turns into a holy pledge to your own health and growth. Adopting the Stoic standards of virtue, knowledge, justice, and courage before the needs of the outside world become the most important thing is a choice. 
When you wake up early in the morning, before everything else starts, you have time to practice being aware. When these things happen, Stoics practice awareness to enjoy the present and get their thoughts ready to face problems with calm. Number two, meditate in the morning with awareness. Stoic philosophy is based on the practice of focused morning meditation, which is a powerful tool for building mental resilience and living in the here and now. This tradition, which comes from Stoic ideas, helps me remember every day how important it is to be calm inside when life is unsure. Mindfulness isn't just a new idea in the world of Stoicism. It's a deliberate way to train your mind to be controlled and focused. Stoics start their day by meditating, which helps them stay in the present and get better at letting go of worries about the past or the future. Through focusing on the present moment, Stoic meditation practitioners work to accept the world as it is, which is a central idea in Stoic philosophy. Stoics don't think that morning meditation is about getting rid of thoughts. Instead, they think that it's about being objective about ideas. Emotional resilience is built by recognizing thoughts without getting caught up in them. Stoics know that they can't change the things that happen to them, but they can change how they react to those things. Meditation in the morning becomes a practice for staying calm when life throws you a curveball. Mindful morning meditation is perfectly in line with Stoic philosophy, which urges people to concentrate on what they can control. Stoics get clear on what they can do by focusing on the present. This helps them separate what they can control from what they can't. Meditation can help you think more clearly, which is helpful throughout the day. Mindfulness also helps with emotional intelligence, which is something that Stoics really value. To make good choices and show the Stoic values of knowledge and patience, it's important to understand your feelings and how they affect you. Meditation in the morning helps people become more emotionally aware, which helps them answer carefully instead of immediately. Stoic morning meditation doesn't just happen on a cushion or in a certain position. It happens in all parts of daily life. The lessons learned in the morning practice affect how Stoics deal with problems, talk to other people, and make choices throughout the day. It is said that Stoics see the world through the mirror of meditation, which makes them strong and flexible. Being present in the morning has benefits beyond just yourself. It also has a good effect on relationships and exchanges with other people. Philosophers called Stoics believe that all people are linked, and a thoughtful morning helps them be kind and understanding with others throughout the day. Number three, show thanks. Stoicism encourages people to practice gratitude. This isn't just a short-term exercise. It's a deep way to approach life with a positive and grateful attitude. A feeling of happiness and resilience that can permeate one's entire day can be fostered by practicing this stoic practice, which involves acknowledging and giving thanks for the basic and simple things in life. Stoicism says that being thankful and being aware of what you can control go hand in hand. Stoics take their minds off of things that are happening outside of their control by focusing on the good things they have. This new way of thinking fits with what the Stoics taught, which is that you should focus on finding happiness inside yourself instead of looking for approval from other people. Saying thank you first thing in the morning sets the tone for the day and encourages happiness and thoughtfulness. Stoics know that even when things are hard, there are still things in life to be thankful for and that recognizing these things makes the mind more stable and strong. Stoic gratitude isn't just for big acts of kindness or one-of-a-kind events. It lives on valuing the small, everyday things that we often forget to be thankful for. It could mean saying thank you for a good night's sleep, the sun's warmth, or a simple meal that keeps you alive. Stoics build a lasting sense of gratitude by finding joy in things that others might consider boring. Realizing that things change is an important part of Stoicism. 
Stoics use thankfulness to enjoy the present moment while knowing that the things they are grateful for will change too. Being aware of this leads to a deep sense of mindfulness, which encourages people to be fully present and involved in every moment, appreciating it for what it is. Stoic thankfulness is more than just feeling thankful. It means showing thanks. Speaking out loud or writing down the things you are thankful for is part of this practice. It reinforces the good feelings that come with being thankful. Stoics strengthen their link with the things in life that make them happy and content by vocalizing their gratitude. Additionally, showing thanks helps build resilience. Stoics know that problems will always be there, but they build up a store of good feelings that can help them through hard times by regularly showing thanks. Stoic ideas of meeting adversity with composure and strength are consistent with this mental resilience. Stoics believe that gratitude is for more than just personal benefits. It also helps people feel linked to each other. Stoics recognize that other people, nature and the world as a whole, all contribute to their happiness. This kind of praise makes relationships stronger and fosters a sense of our shared humanity. The fourth thing is to think about virtue. One of the most important parts of Stoicism is thinking about virtue. In Stoicism, the goal of moral greatness is what gives life meaning and purpose. One Stoic practice is to think about the qualities of knowledge, courage, justice and temperance every morning. This helps people match their actions with these leading principles, which leads to a life of honesty and happiness. Stoicism believes that virtue is the greatest good and puts it at the center of its philosophy. As one of the four primary values, wisdom means seeking information and being able to make good decisions. Stoics set the goal to understand things and make choices based on reason and wisdom by focusing on knowledge first thing in the morning. Stoicism emphasizes the virtue of courage as the fortitude to face difficulties and adversity with resilience. Stoics get ready for the unknowns of the day with courage by thinking about courage in the morning. They know that difficulties are chances to grow, not things to be afraid of. Treating others fairly and with kindness is part of justice, which is another key virtue in Stoicism. By thinking about justice in the morning, people are encouraged to think about how they can make their communities and relationships better, making sure that their actions are in line with the larger idea of social unity and moral behavior. To keep your inner balance in Stoicism, you need to have the virtue of temperance, which means self-control and moderation. Stoics think about moderation in the morning, which makes them think about how they can control their urges and wants throughout the day so that their actions are in line with reason and not based on uncontrolled emotions. As a Stoic, thinking about virtue is not an idle activity. It is a call to act. It includes making plans for the day based on the virtues, which is like making a roadmap for moral behavior and choices. Stoic ideas about taking responsibility for your actions and choosing to live a good life are in line with this purposeful approach. Thinking about virtue in the morning is also a good way to check in with yourself. Stoics compare their deeds to the ideals to see where they can grow and improve. To become more patient and keep improving yourself and building a good character, this process of becoming more self-aware is very important. Stoicism's focus on virtue serves as a lesson of how important it is to grow as a person. Stoics know that practicing virtue is the only way to find true happiness. By regularly thinking about these ideas, people can build a life that is not only morally good, but also deeply satisfying. Additionally, focusing on virtue every day in the morning helps to form habits. Stoics believe that repeated actions can change a person's character. They also believe that considering values on a regular basis can help people incorporate these ideas into their daily lives, turning them into strong moral habits. Additionally, 
Thinking about virtue affects partnerships and exchanges with other people, not just within oneself. Stoics believe that all people are linked, and the morning thought on virtue motivates people to act in a way that is consistent with these ideas, making society more fair and peaceful. Fifth, give your day some thought when you plan it. Planning your day with purpose, which comes from the Stoic philosophy, is a smart way to get things done that fits with the philosophy's main ideas of focusing on what you can control and living with meaning. Stoic ideas help people get through the complicated parts of life with purpose and speed by making a to-do list or setting goals for the day. Stoicism stresses how important it is to know the difference between what you can control and what you can't. Planning the day with purpose helps Stoics focus on things they can control, which lets them put their energy and efforts where they can make the most difference. Making a to-do list in the morning gives you a concrete way to organize your tasks. Stoics know that time is limited and that people can make sure their actions are in line with their overall goals and values by carefully planning their days. The serious dedication to living a life with purpose and meaning is shown by this deliberate way of managing time. Stoicism teaches people to face problems with courage and flexibility. Planning the day ahead of time helps Stoics think of possible problems and come up with good ways to deal with them. Individuals can develop an attitude that is not easily affected by outside events by thinking about different scenarios. This is an example of the stoic virtue of resilience in the face of adversity. Making plans for the day also helps you be more self-disciplined. Stoics know that discipline is important for personal growth and they use deliberate planning every day to improve this virtue. People develop the discipline they need to stay focused on their goals by sticking to a set plan. Stonians use making a list of things to do or setting goals for the day as a way to practice awareness. It makes people think about the bigger picture of their deeds and make sure they are in line with their ideals. This kind of careful planning gives daily activities a sense of cohesion and purpose, which leads to a more peaceful and well thought out way of living. When you plan with intention, you don't fill your day with too many things to do. Instead, you choose activities that fit with your goals. Stoics know how important it is to keep things simple and focused. By carefully choosing what to do, people can avoid distractions and stay true to their ideals. Also, planning the day ahead of time gives you a sense of achievement. Stoics understand how important success and growth are, and crossing off jobs gives people a physical reminder of their hard work. This feeling of success makes the Stoic more determined to keep getting better and growing as a person. Planning the day with purpose also has an effect on connections with other people, in addition to its own benefits. Stoicism stresses how all people are linked and how making choices that are in line with your values can help make society more peaceful and helpful. In the end, planning your day with purpose is a way to put Stoic philosophy into practice. It shows how to focus on what you can control and live a focused life. By making a to-do list or setting goals, people use the power of discipline, awareness and resilience to live a purposeful life. They make sure that their actions are in line with their beliefs and improve their own and others' well-being. Sixth, work out in the morning. A central part of Stoic philosophy is working out in the morning, which comes from the idea that mental and physical health are closely linked. Stoics believe that a healthy body and mind go hand in hand. By doing some light exercise in the morning, people take a more balanced approach to their health that is in line with Stoic ideas. Stoicism stresses how important self-discipline is, and working out in the morning becomes a concrete way to show this virtue. By making it a habit to work out regularly, people develop the self-control to put their health first, which supports the stoic ideas of conscious living and taking responsibility for oneself. Working out first thing in the morning 
is a great way to clear your mind and concentrate. Stoics know that having a clear mind is important for making smart choices and dealing with life's problems. Working out in the morning wakes up the brain by releasing serotonin and improving brain function. This sets a good mood for the day. Stoicism says that problems and pain should be seen as chances to grow. People can push their physical limits in a safe setting when they work out in the morning. This builds an attitude of resilience and flexibility that can be used outside of the gym in many areas of life. The Stoic philosophy emphasizes the importance of being in the here and now, and stretching, strength training, and cardio in the morning help people be fully present in their bodies. Paying attention to your breath, movement, and body feelings is required by the exercise, which leads to a state of awareness that is in line with Stoic ideas. Also, working out in the morning is good for your mental health. Stoics believe that mental and physical health are linked. When people do things that make them feel better and lower their stress, they are living the Stoic virtue of eudaimonia, which means they are happy and generally well. Stoicism is based on the idea of consistency, and morning exercise can help people set up a practice that helps them reach their long-term health goals. By making exercise a normal part of their morning routine, People form habits that help them stay healthy and full of energy. Living a stoic lifestyle means recognizing that everything changes and working out in the morning becomes a way to take charge of your health as you age. Focusing on what you can control is a stoic principle that people follow when they take care of their physical health. Additionally, working out in the morning is a form of self-care that supports the Stoic idea of valuing oneself without going overboard. By making time to move and feed their bodies, people take a measured approach to their health that stays away from extremes and fits with Stoic ideas of moderation. The benefits of working out in the morning go beyond the individual and have an effect on ties between people. A person who is fit and full of energy is better able to interact with others, making social interactions and activities more positive and living up to the stoic idea of living in peace with other people. Seventh practice, visualizing bad things. A unique and useful part of stoicism is practicing negative thinking to build strength and resilience for life's natural obstacles. As a stoic practice, you think about the worst-case scenarios on purpose. Picture possible problems for a few minutes to get your mind ready for them. Adopting negative vision doesn't mean focusing on fear or depression. Instead, it means building a strong mind that can handle problems with calm and confidence. The practice of negative vision is one way that Stoicism, which emphasizes meeting reality and getting ready for life's challenges, is expressed. By thinking about problems that might come up, people actively practice the Stoic concept of recognizing that life is temporary and unpredictable. Individuals can mentally practice facing adversity through this exercise, which turns into a mental training. Negative vision can also be used to build mental resilience before facing something in real life. Stoics recognize that how we feel about adversity can have just as much of an effect as the adversity itself. By picturing the worst-case scenarios in their thoughts, people train their minds to act calmly and logically instead of giving in to fear or depression. Positive imagery and the Stoic virtue of moderation go hand in hand. Stoics believe in moderation and staying away from excesses. They also say that picturing possible problems can help people see their situations more clearly. This activity makes them realize how stable their current situation is, while also getting ready for how unsure the future will be. Negative perception can also be a source of thanks. Stoics believe that life's circumstances change quickly, so they try to be grateful for what they have right now. When people think about the problems that might happen, they become more aware of how valuable their present gifts are. 
This makes them more grateful for the everyday things in life. It is possible to see losses as chances to grow by using negative vision. Stoics see difficulties as opportunities to develop qualities like courage, resilience, and knowledge, rather than as immovable barriers. By picturing possible problems, people change their attitude from dreading failures to welcoming them as necessary parts of their personal growth journey. Also, negative vision is a way to practice accepting what will happen. Stoics stress how important it is to accept what you can't change. By picturing the worst-case scenarios, people can live their lives in line with the Stoic ideal of being calm no matter what happens. The practice of negative vision develops courage in problem-solving. Stoicism says to focus on what you can control and picturing possible problems can help people come up with steps they can take to lower their risks and make plans for what to do if something goes wrong. This purposeful method fits with the stoic ideas of living on purpose and making smart choices. A feeling of self-efficacy grows when you do negative thinking. Stoics think that each person has free will and the power to deal with problems in a good way. People gain faith in their ability to overcome challenges and come out better on the other side when they mentally prepare for adversity. Stillness and Thought Stoicism encourages people to enjoy quiet times and think about their lives. These times can be very helpful when life gets too busy. To do this stoic practice, you have to set aside a moment of silence to think about yourself. This will help your thoughts settle and give you a deep sense of calm before you start your busy day. This deliberate break from the outside world fits with stoic ideas and gives people a chance to become more self-aware and clear-headed. According to Stoicism, silence is valuable because it gives people a mental safe place to escape from the constant stimulation of the outside world. People choose to disconnect from the noise around them when they take a moment of silence. This creates a place where people can center themselves and think about themselves. To be silent and thoughtful at the same time means to embrace silence. In the silence, people focus on themselves and watch their thoughts and feelings without judging them. This mindfulness exercise supports self-awareness, a key component of Stoic philosophy that enables people to comprehend and control their internal reactions to external circumstances. Silence gives us a chance to think about ourselves. For Stoics, it's very important to look at your ideas, deeds and beliefs. By giving themselves a moment of silence, people create an atmosphere that is good for self-reflection, which helps them think about their goals, motives and growth areas. And finally, spending time in silence and thought can help reset your mind. Stoicism encourages people to take breaks on purpose to recharge their minds, acknowledging the influence of outside factors on mental health. It's a break from the endless noise and demands of the outside world to be alone with your thoughts. Being quiet helps you connect with the present moment. Stoicism stresses how important it is to live in the present moment. People can get more in touch with their ideas and feelings by enjoying times of silence. Being aware of the present moment is in line with Stoic beliefs, which tell people to value the depth of their present experiences. By choosing to be quiet, the deliberate silence helps people feel calm Stoicism recognizes that outside events can be upsetting, but it encourages people to stay calm inside no matter what is going on outside. Taking a moment of silence is like making a conscious effort to find inner peace. It protects you from the things that might stress you out during the day. In addition, silence can be a way to show thanks. Stoics believe that life is temporary and that savoring the present moment is important. People can show their thankfulness for just being alive by taking a moment of silence. This can help them feel happy and grateful for the gift of life. Silence is not a way to avoid something. It's a way to consciously interact with something. Stoicism gives people the courage to face difficulties and unknowns with composure. By taking a moment of silence, 
people can get ready to connect, which helps them start the day with a calm and focused mind. Being quiet can help you learn. People can connect with their inner knowledge and insight when there is no outside noise. Stoicism knows how important it is to connect with this inner direction. Silence can help people connect with their innate knowledge and make choices that are in line with their values. Powerful sayings. A strong way to strengthen your commitment to virtue, resilience and inner calm is to end your morning routine with positive statements that are in line with Stoic principles. Stoicism stresses how important it is to live on purpose and shape your mind. Adding mantras to your morning routine is a proactive way to develop a Stoic attitude that will guide your actions and reactions throughout the day. From a Stoic point of view, positive statements should focus on qualities like knowledge, courage, justice and moderation. People can set a positive tone for the day and ground themselves in the values that are at the heart of Stoic philosophy by saying statements that are in line with these principles. Affirmations are a conscious way to change your view and develop a good attitude about life. Stoics are committed to living on purpose and saying mantras is a way that they show this. Stoics know that the mind has a lot of power over behavior they believe that by regularly expressing stoic ideals, people can change their minds and make it more clear that they want to live a life in line with these principles. Positive mantras can also be used to motivate and support yourself. Stoicism teaches people to face problems with courage and resilience, and mantras can help people develop an attitude that sees problems as chances to learn new skills. You can feel confident about the day ahead by saying mantras over and over that remind you of your ability to handle problems with calmness. The growth of mental resilience is also aided by Stoicism affirmations. Stoics know how important it is to stay calm inside even when bad things happen outside and they do positive statements every day to protect their minds from needless disruption. By confirming your ability to control your emotions, you build a strong mind that stays stable even when life changes. In Stoicism, affirmations can be a way to practice being thankful. Being in line with Stoic ideas about appreciating the present moment means being thankful for the traits you want to have and the chances to grow. Affirmations help you remember how rich your life is when you live it with ideals and purpose. Repeating mantras on purpose becomes a way to think about yourself. Affirmations offer an organized time for reflection, which is a key component of Stoicism. Stoicism encourages people to regularly examine their ideas and beliefs. People can better understand Stoic principles and how to apply them in their daily lives by actively thinking about the ideals that are written into the statements. In Stoicism, Positive statements are not about making wishes come true. Instead, they are about strengthening strengths and values that you already have. You can increase your sense of self-acceptance and self-awareness by naming and praising the traits you already have. In a Stoic context, this practice becomes the basis for ongoing growth and self-improvement. Not only can affirmations affect your personal life, they can also affect your ties with other people. Stoicism stresses how important it is to get along with others, and people can help make the world a better place to live by saying statements that support ideals like fairness and kindness. Read Stoic Philosophy number 10. Start your day by reading a short piece about the deep knowledge of Stoic thinkers like Marcus Aurelius, Seneca or Epictetus. Not only does reading excerpts from their works feed your mind, but it also gives you important insights and advice for dealing with life's many challenges. Starting the day with Stoic philosophy can be very inspiring. It can help you think about things in a way that is based on timeless principles, which can affect how you act and react throughout the day. When added to the morning routine, Stoic philosophy, which stresses virtue, resilience and the search for eudaimonia, happiness, becomes a leading light. 
By learning about the ideas of Stoic thinkers, people can build a logical base that can help them make good decisions and find comfort when things go wrong. By choosing to read Stoic philosophy in the morning, you are putting your brain and mental health first. Stoics know how important it is to keep learning more about the world and about yourself. By soaking oneself in the deep insights of Stoic thinkers, one sets the stage for a day filled with focus and purpose. Also, the advice given by Stoic thinkers fits with the Stoic philosophy of focusing on what you can control and building up inner power that doesn't change when bad things happen. Reading Stoic philosophy first thing in the morning helps people mentally get ready for the day's challenges and unknowns by giving them the resilience and knowledge to handle them. Self-reflection is an important part of Stoicism and a lot of Stoic writing supports it. When people read Stoic philosophy in the morning, they have time to stop and think about the timeless truths that are written into the book. During this moment of reflection, you can take in Stoic ideas and think about how to use them in different situations that might come up during the day. Reading Stoic philosophy in the morning also gives you a sense of connection with an intellectual system that has been around for a long time. People can connect with the ideas of ancient Roman or Greek thinkers and see how they fit into a bigger story of humanity. They can find comfort and direction in the Stoic tradition's combined knowledge. Getting involved with Stoic philosophy helps you live a good life. People who follow the Stoics try to live by virtues like modesty, knowledge, courage and justice. Reading the works of Stoic thinkers first thing in the morning can help people develop these qualities in their daily lives. Reading about Stoic philosophy in the morning also gives you time to think about being thankful. Stoic thinkers often think about how short life is and how important it is to enjoy the present moment. This thought turns into a source of gratitude, pushing people to see the good things in their lives and start their day with a sense of thanks. When you read Stoic philosophy, it stops being just an intellectual exercise and turns into a real-life experience. By taking in Stoic lessons, people create a Stoic mindset that affects how they act, think and make choices throughout the day. The morning reading helps you grow in new ways and shows you how to live out the Stoic ideals in real life. The Stoic morning practice also stresses how important it is to be consistent and set long-term goals for your well-being. By bringing these habits into daily life, people create habits that are in line with Stoic ideas and help them stay healthy and full of life. Stoicism's central tenet of consistency reflects the philosophy's recognition of the transience of life and serves as a tool for discipline. Focusing on what you can control is an important part of the Stoic philosophy. People practice this by doing things like morning exercises, negative thinking, silence and statements. This helps them feel stable as life changes. From physical health to mental resilience, from awareness to conscious living, the Stoic morning routine is a living, changing set of practices that work together to improve many aspects of well-being. Every part fits together to make a whole plan based on Stoic philosophy. By constantly following these habits, people not only improve their own growth, but also make their social relations better, living out the timeless knowledge of Stoicism in their everyday lives. In conclusion, adding Stoic practices to your morning routine is a complete way to improve your health that is in line with the main ideas of this old philosophy. As a visible sign of self-discipline, exercising in the morning not only improves physical health but also boosts mental focus and resilience, setting a good tone for the day. Using negative imagery can help build resilience and courage, empowering people to handle life's obstacles with calm and strength. Being still and thinking about things is another exercise that the Stoics recommend. It can help you become more self-aware and calm inside. 
The stoic idea of awareness supports this purposeful break from outside stimulation and urges people to live in the present moment. Stoic ideals serve as the foundation for strong affirmations that help people change their minds, stay committed to virtue, and build emotional resilience. When you read Stoic philosophy in the morning, it can give you a lot of motivation and help you deal with the problems you face in life. People can set themselves up for a day filled with focus, purpose, and an intellectual base that serves as a moral guide by learning from the ideas of Stoic philosophers. Basically, all of these Stoic habits add up to a well-rounded and purposeful morning routine. In addition to improving physical and mental health, they also boost resilience, encourage awareness, and encourage a good attitude. By following these Stoic principles every morning, people not only get in touch with old knowledge, but they also get the tools they need to handle the challenges of modern life with grace and wisdom. Additionally, these Stoic habits have positive effects on relationships between people as well. A person who gets morning exercise, silence and meditation is healthier and more energetic and is better able to interact happily with others. This makes it easier to connect with other people in a way that fits with the Stoic idea of living in peace with other people. Affirmations are a deliberate way to grow values. Doing so improves your ability to handle relationships with knowledge, courage, justice and moderation, creating a good and moral social environment. As we conclude our exploration of Stoicism, and its relevance to overcoming modern challenges, it's important to pause and reflect on the ground we've covered together. This journey has not just been about learning a set of philosophical principles, it's been about discovering practical tools and insights that can be woven into the fabric of our daily lives. Stoicism offers a compass to navigate the complexities of the modern world with resilience, equanimity and a deep sense of purpose. Remember, the application of Stoic wisdom is a practice, a continual process of growth, learning and adaptation. The challenges of today's fast-paced interconnected world are multifaceted, but the Stoic principles you've encountered here provide a robust foundation for facing them head-on. By focusing on what is within our control, practicing gratitude and embracing obstacles as opportunities for growth, we can cultivate a life of tranquility and fulfillment amidst the noise. Take these teachings with you as you move forward, integrating them into your interactions, decisions and reflections. Let the stoic virtues of wisdom, courage, justice and temperance guide you in your personal and professional endeavors. The path to mastering modern challenges through stoicism is a lifelong journey one that is as rewarding as it is challenging. Thank you for embarking on this journey through a stoic guide to overcoming modern challenges. May the insights you've gained serve as a beacon of light in your quest for clarity, resilience and personal freedom. Continue to cultivate your stoic practice and let it empower you to navigate the ever-changing landscape of the modern world with grace and strength.